Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board, yes! We here to talk all things trade. Before you deadline. dive into the trade deadline, mm-hmm. we were just up here talking. Dog, Sauce did not get burned by speed. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I, I he hate did the it. internet. Like, first and foremost, no route is zigzaggy, zigzaggy. Once you got to do all of that, you've been locked up. And no professional cornerback is going to chase a random person 50 yards. But he had he just phone let runners him go. on. He just if let he had go. cleats, he would have burned them. <laughs> if, they had, yo, if they had cleats, he – oh, man. It uh, looked like Sauce just kind of gave up after out the six zig, and yeah. then he, that's when he burned them. Because he the quarterback him. is usually sacked by the end. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Uh, be sure to leave a like on the episode. Subscribe to the channel as we are on our road back to 100K. Go over to Spotify. Go over to Apple and give us five stars as we continue to try to uh, dominate the podcast world. We, we I talked about it a little second ago, but when you compare how many five stars we have to the people around our range, we're killing the game, and we, we appreciate y'all for that. I appreciate y'all Thank for you. being the most dominant fan base in the world. Killing it, man. Absolutely killing it. And we're going to do our part. Yeah, play it, at, play it at night when you're going to sleep on on. Uh, whatever the sound off. <laughs> He's trying to pull a Justin Bieber for us. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. Shout out to that boy Bieber, man. Shout out to Bieber. So trade that line stuff. I like that dance you just did though. What did you? Do? Wait, what did when you, you do? Something about to subscribe. That's so he did something. Like oh, what that. happened like, to the handshake? Hey, whoa! Oh, 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 I do. That I, was I, a I was, handshake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I threw up the hundred. That's that well, handshake. That's the handshake. Oh, okay. You getting a little too extensive with the handshakes? Oh. Speaking of handshakes, give me some skin, my man. Ah, 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 ah. There it is. We out here, man. We out here. Snack attack. <laughs> that's the name of the handshake? <laughs> no, that's, that's Snack no nickname. Attack. We got a duo. Does <laughs> <laughs> it sound like a snack attack? <laughs> we end it like that. You're right. It's a snack attack. For I like sure. that. But you more of a than me. I'm just, you You add the, that's your. We so buy the apple is the. So it's an apple. Yeah, it's an apple. I like that. I ain't never. Have you ever seen him eat an apple before? No. I was biting into a rice cake. <laughs> Plain. <laughs> plain rice, rice cake. Do that's like so- that's sociopath yeah, stuff. That's not- <laughs> plain rice cake. It's a yeah. plain rice cake. That's five calories, too. I'm, that just sound <laughs> nasty, too. I'm trying to stand straight. No peanut butter. That's why you eating the, the apple. I thought we was on some health stuff. We is, but at least the apple got some flavor. Rice cake got flavor. <laughs> so what, do, what you do when you're dieting is you just... Conscientiously, oh, you, add that to you flavor. imagine that it's yes, like that. You imagine yes. it's the big double you know cheeseburger, I, but it's the plain rice. I cake. found out how to do that years ago when I had COVID. Yeah. No smell, no taste, and it was Thanksgiving. I had to imagine the, <laughs> the yam flavor. Like? Yeah, okay. Been, but the second day with the leftovers, it opened my shit up because okay. we use that flavor. We use that flavor. Now, if I was over at Tyler House for Thanksgiving, <laughs> my shit would have still been a little. <laughs> nah, shout out to Miss Han. I'm just joking. Shout to Masson. Um, for the trade deadline. Yeah. Kind of a do it. Ah, not so, for unless me. Unless you're a Knicks fan. Unless you're Knicks. You see, he tried to, yeah, he tried he to pop his jacket on. He, he do got on the Knicks jacket. He, he do. To this, ain't just, this ain't that. just a Knicks jacket. You can't just go in the store and get this, you man. You cannot. Ronnie Feig, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Kith, baby. You understand what I'm saying? Whole collection. Didn't we get that in New York? Didn't you get that in New York? With us? No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I thought this, I saw you get that in the this, store. This was going to be out in minutes. Okay. You had to have called up Ronnie. Oh, or shit. Ronnie had you on that list of selective Nick fans. Okay. You know what I mean? Because my boy Deuce got one, too. You the man. Shout out to du- 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 Deuce Deuce. I think Spike Lee got a couple of those, don't he? Spike I don't Lee know if Spike Lee got this. He got the reversible one. Oh, oh Spike Lee switched. got this. Yeah, the okay. I don't, think he, made, I don't think he made that list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he made that list. No. Imagine if he made the list, but Spike Lee doesn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm respectable out here. But, no, I'm, yeah, Nick, Nick's, we made moves. Um, before Biggest we dive wins. into each move, though, the deadline was a little bit disappointing yeah, it was. for me. It was and the reason sad. I'll say it was disappointing, you got one end, it wasn't disappointing because it was activity. And as a f- NBA fans, I guess we just blessed to have activity. But um, when you tell me for months DeJounte is going to be traded. Yeah. Sources told you to your face. Yeah, and I seen him yesterday. Did you hit him? A thousand. Huh? <laughs> Did you hit him? He lied. He yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sold it the rest of the basketball world. I couldn't really be that mad. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like nobody was really moved that they was telling Kyle D-Lo. Kuzma. D-Lo, the Lakers, the Bulls, <laughs> no, all these teams, the Warriors, the most desperate teams in the league did nothing. Like, Sometimes you're not always going to hit the home run yeah. one, but sometimes it's like, let me trade him just because 
he might shake up the locker room. That's yeah. why I like the Bucks with the Pat Bev. Pat Bev, is he going to go on a floor and change everything? No, but they need a they dog. They held a team to 84 they, points yesterday. They did. They, they need, need somebody, somebody that's going to be strong. Like that account. Black. I mean, yeah, they did. <laughs> he could definitely contribute. I was hoping Trey Mann played. He might have He might have tapped y'all <laughs> ass up. Debut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He definitely going to contribute as one of them people that can, like, get on people and be accountable. Mm -hmm. I think even, like, new to a team, he just got that reputation. Like, they're not going to take it the wrong way. Yeah. And I think I'm, they kind of need that on there. You think they might not take it the wrong way? I think they're not used to that. They haven't had nobody in the locker room like Pat Bev ever. I don't think Drew Holiday was like that. I mean, Pat Bev is like very vocal. But it's for a reason. He's not just doing it because it's like whatever. It's like that's what it takes to win. He wants to yeah. be like – he wants to win and not just in the regular season. He wants to do it in the playoffs as well. And I think the things that he's saying or will be saying, if mm -hmm. he's going to say what we think he'll be saying – I don't think it's going to be that much of a surprise. It's yeah. just that you have certain leaders on that team that aren't vocal. So, like, Giannis isn't going to be like, man, he might say something here and there, but he, you know, he's a lead by example type guy. Mm -hmm. Same with Damian Lillard. Th this dude is really just going to tell you. And if you can't own up or accept the, you know, accountability for the laps, yeah. lapses that's happening on the floor, then shit, mm -hmm. you don't need to be a part of the scene. Yeah. I like, I like this conversation. It's perfect segment into the drop the mic. Which today is, what do you think is the most leading contributing factors to bad defense? It could be personnel, mm -hmm. coaching. It's a lot of factors. What do you think? Communication, is Mike. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest thing. It's on my mind because we were just talking about the Bucks. I can't wait to hear y'all answers. But I say communication. When I think of defense and I think of pillars in my mind from when I was growing up, I think of guys like Kevin Garnett who communicated on the back line, mm -hmm. everything that's going on. Joe Kim Noah was a great communicator on the back line. Tyson Chandler. Hey, this, this have Tyson Chandler. You got to be loud, boisterous, really looking at every single thing. That's the beauty of being the back line guy. You see everything in front of you. You can say, hey, Mike, he coming over there. D Mills, you up, you hedge. He, he shooting that, you up that. <laughs> KB, he switching right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then now it's contagious. The Knicks got him going crazy. Too. You know what's funny too, bro? <laughs> so I mean, I don't really care. Like, the NBA is just a whole different monster. But, like, in high school, when there's somebody yelling on defense, it's a little yeah, intimidating. Yeah, yeah. Versus, like, a team where I'm going and there's nobody talking on defense and it's quiet For in sure. here. Let me get to work. Yo, Javon came to uh, one of EJ games that we was just talking about. Uh, Tavares brought up Proviso's defense. And I told Javon, like, y'all was, was really good. Not that y'all did anything special, but when y'all did get that turnover, all of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that get into we we went to a suburban school. Yeah. That shake boots. Yeah. We just called they intimidated. Once that first turnover go on, and you pulling up your shorts, it clapping and they say, Yeah, yeah. Now they don't even want to bring the ball up no more. I remember when uh we were at Proviso East. I do too. And coach was like, travel in pairs. Yeah. Oh, coach. Coach. Uh, coach. Uh, hey, you remember? Do you hear me when? Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. Traveling and pairs. We was playing pro am or whatever. <laughs> we was playing pro am and the team was trapping us up court. He was like, "Be careful, Mike. You see them trapping." I was like. Come on, man. I play starting point guard <laughs> against Provence. <Professor. laughs> I'm prepared for anything in life. <laughs> so to answer your question, I, I think some some of it is personnel driven for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that ties into like the effort aspect of it. Because I think Trey Young's a perfect example of this, right? For the first four and a half year, four years of his career, one of the worst defenders in all of basketball. But he put together the effort now. Nothing has changed about his athletic ability, his height, or anything. Only thing that changed is that he's trying. Mm -hmm. And that he cares a little bit more. And now he went from a player that was the worst defensive player in the league to he's not he's very far from that at this point. Mm -hmm. So you think about like so so example, the Lakers have a, a solid defense. They're not the defense they were last year, but they have a very solid defense. Anthony Davis gets a, a ton of credit for that because he's holding things on the back end. One of the things that has changed, at least in my opinion, with the Lakers defense is that their point of attack defender has gone from somebody like Jared Vanderbilt, who one game he's guarding Luca, and then the next game he's guarding a six three guy. Now your point of attack defender is who? Torian you know, Prince. Ugh, that's no, that's Torian, tough. Yeah. So it's, it's like personnel driven plus the effort side, where especially when you talk about the top end talent, when you see Kyrie Irving getting his stance to guard James Hardy, like, oh, yeah, we know he can mm -hmm. defend, but it's just not something he cares about or he doesn't have the energy to do 82 times a year or in Kyrie's case, 41 times a year. Kyrie, what the hell? Let's get some more games played. Uh, so it's a little bit of all of You that. can take time off when you're great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I tell you one thing. Because they told me some people in the comments some episodes ago was a little mad. 
I I take fifty five Kyrie over seventy nine Jamal Murray as a viewer. <laughs> as a viewer, <laughs> boy, I'd rather watch fifty five Kyrie games than seventy nine Jamal Murrays. <laughs> you know. I, I will watch forty one Kyrie Irving games than to watch any Blazers games. <laughs> so what are you doing with the other 41 of the no Kyrie? Are you still watching? I'm going to watch highlights of Kyrie okay. from previous years. <laughs> I know he feel the same way. He'll watch 12 Dame games before he watch the NBA Finals. What about the Kyrie games where he's playing? <laughs> the, where he's playing the Blazers though? Huh? You watching the games where he's playing the Blazers? He's not suited up for that. He's game. not suited up. Uh, for that. Oh. And, I'm, and I'm only I'm only speaking <laughs> on. He this, just got suited up from one though. Yeah, oh, I guess I'm only true. speaking on this current form of the Blazers because when Shade and Sharp come back, I might watch two more. You ain't want to see Jeremy Grunge off uh, 49 in the loss to the Pistons? That. I did that was, see that. That was crazy. See that. I, I got it. That's, like only, that's only because it was the it was late last game type yeah. thing, but. Dropping 49 and a loss to the Pistons. He scored 17 crazy. straight points at one point in this game. And then in overtime, he scored two points as a team. Two points in five when minutes. When you give up a ball. lead, when you blow a lead to the Pistons, man. Yeah. And I saw Chauncey Billis go up to Monty Williams after the game and shake his hand and smile. I'm like, I know that, fi- that's, that f- <laughs> smile is fake. Yes. The Pistons going to win 20 games this season, man. You think so? I'm pretty pretty not confident in it. All right, let's get back to the trade deadline. Yeah. So we talk about the Pistons. So so we're gonna we're gonna grade every single trade deadline deal, all t- two of them, um, <laughs> and and then we're gonna talk about the teams that did not make any trades. We're gonna get into the Kobe statue that was inv- unveiled and all Super of the other Bowl things. Super Bowl tomorrow. Um, Super Bowl is tomorrow. We got a lot of this to talk about in this episode. So let's start off with the Mavericks. Let's do their two deals. They acquired P.J. Washington mm-hmm. and two second-round picks, 2024-2028. They gave up Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a 2027 first-round pick. The next one they did was to bring in a Daniel Gafford. Underrated. Um, who I'm assuming, once everything is healthy, back up for Rashawn Holmes in a 2024 first-round pick via the OKC Thunder. Two deals made. How are y'all feeling? Because I, I, I've seen convic- conflicting opinions about the Mavs deadline, and I, I'm just curious of where y'all head is at. I mean, I think P.J. Washington gives them an offensive punch more so than Grant Williams. Um, Grant Williams was kind of like falling out of rotation a little bit, so kind of makes sense that you get rid of a guy that you invested in, you thought he was going to be the glue guy that fit perfectly, now you wash your hands with it, you move on from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Daniel Gafford is still like that same mode of centers that they just need and they want. He, him and uh, Derek Lively play very similar roles. They're going to pick and roll, dunk, play defense, rebound, block shots, they, they kind of play the same mode. So now you have two centers that when they interchange for each other, you're not really missing much. Mm-hmm. So for me, I think that was a W. I just like to see them go out and at least do something. They didn't swing, they didn't get Kyle Kuzma, which is a deal that was on the table and was almost accepted. So then they pivoted it and then they got other pieces. I liked it. I really liked that. I would give them an A for the trade. Honestly, I thought they went out and got exactly what they needed. It wasn't a home run hitter, but I thought the added rotational depth was like was really needed especially with the sides that they got Gafford for the Wizards the Wizards have been terrible but Gafford has been pretty good you know he's been able to still be like a a uh a deterrent at the rim still can you know finish the lives with Lucas so I like what he brings to the team as a backup especially if Derek Lively gets in foul trouble or anything like that and also PJ PJ Washington is like a do-it-all for them I, not only can he kind of play he can play on the defensive side but he can score from all different levels too so I don't think that not only can he run like pick and roll, whatever, but if he's getting if Luca or Kyrie is getting double and he gets it off the catch, that's a move right there yeah. compared to what Grant Williams or whatever. Like that's what makes it so good is they gave up pieces that really weren't doing anything for them this season and brought in two valuable pieces. And I think Gaffer's probably in his best role being a backup now. I don't I don't think I've seen enough from him to where I can say he's a he, legitimate starting center that I want. He's going to bring what. They probably thought, and what a lot of people thought, Javale McGee was going to bring. Yes. yes, yes. So I think that that's a really crucial part for them. I love, I love this. I think if the Knicks, if the Knicks trade was was what was reported at first, which was like Quinn Grimes for Alec Burks, right? The Mavericks would have been the winner of the trade deadline. Um, first and foremost, the Grant Williams contract was just so long. I think we're going to get to the point in the NBA where. Obviously, agents and players are going to want long-term contracts. But if you're a role player, the teams that have you are going to really want those short deals. Mm -hmm. Because these players be having like one year. Role players would be like one year a guy shooting 43% from three. 
The next year he's down to 37. One year guy can defend. The next year guy can't defend. <laughs> One year he's healthy. This year he's not. It's like that's just the life of a role player, depending on what coach and system and team you're playing for. Um, so I don't really know if teams like the Mavericks are going to ever be committed to having these long-term deals to players unless you're Luke and Kyrie Irving mm-hmm. and Derek Lively. I think it depends on the role player. Because um, I think a de- guy like Derek White is well, going to pursue Derek, long. He's the most elite no. role player. At this point, he's damn near not even a role player. That's true. He, he yeah. All star conversation. Yeah, you you just named I, the guy. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. They gave up a first round pick to bring in PJ Washington. That feels I've, I've, decent. That's okay. To I me, think. that but was okay. It was to I get was him, okay. and it was to get off Grant Williams. But mm-hmm. you gave up a first round pick to get to Grant get Grant Williams. Williams. Yeah. So basically, this deal turns into. Two first round picks to bring in PJ Washington, one first round pick to bring in Daniel Gafford, three first round picks allocated to two players that we're gonna assume are the fourth and seventh most important player on a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually first round picks are more valuable than, than the pieces that they got. And I'm pretty sure these are the only first round picks traded the entire deadline. Like no other, I'm, if yeah, I can remember correctly, seconds. it's all a bu- bunch of second round picks. Same that happened last deadline. We saw seconds a bunch of seconds. Just like <laughs> six second round picks. Yeah, and we're gonna out. see the same thing <laughs> on the draft night. Um, but as far as the first round picks, hey. What what I said on my show is when you have a talent like Luca, sometimes it's upgrading the overall talent around him is mm-hmm. is enough. Even if yeah. that means cause like right now their treasure trove of picks and different things to potentially level up the team again is pretty bare. Like they don't have any first round picks outside of the twenty twenty seven draft, which is where Luka Doncic's contract ends. So it's like hypothetically in this real world that Luka Doncic has not been super okay with the way Dallas has been running. He wants out, boom, boom, boom. You don't have your own picks to kind of reset. Again, that's something maybe you don't care about because you have Luka Doncic right now. Also, based on what was happening around the deadline, it's like, did we need to give up these first round picks for these type of talents players? Yeah. We're like, who, I guess it's all subjective. Who's more talented, Boya Bogdanovich or PJ Washington? Boya? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. All that yeah. was one guy, a, a role player, and, and Quinn Grimes, who might turn into something more under a new role in two seconds. But they also got it, Alec Burks, who's a good player. I think they look at Quinn Grimes as he's more valuable Their first than a first-round pick. pick. Yeah. Um, would you rather have a, a f- first-round pick in the 20s, potentially, from the Mavericks, or would you rather have Quinn Grimes? I'm taking Quinn Grimes. Mm-hmm. I feel that. I feel that. I, it, just, it just scares me a little bit. Because um, usually when you throw in three first-round picks to improve your roster, it's like we got somebody that we really, really love. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, that's also the beneficiary, kind of to the point you were saying, when you have Luka and you have Kyrie, you're kind of just looking for the other things, of some consistency and some people you can feel like you're a little bit more reliable upon because you don't need that much. We've seen Luka literally go toe-to-toe with Kawhi and Paul George by himself. They have so been it, the least healthy team in basketball where right now, they don't have a single lineup that has played 100 minutes together. And we're 50 games to the season. No no construction of their team has played 100 minutes. So it's, it's really kind of impossible to look at the Mavericks and say, say how good they are because we haven't seen them at full strength ever this season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we've seen how good Luka is. That's why I really agree with you when he's saying, like, just put talent around him. Mm-hmm. You know, for the last couple of years, that's all they've been saying is, like, we need people around him. We need people around him. It's just the Luka show. Oh, we did see a first-round pick. Kelly Olenek. Yes, yes. Kelly Olenek and Oche yeah, yeah, That's what things, That's what came to my mind, too. Two things, and we'll get to the Raptors, obviously. I was a little – I felt the way about the Raptors doing it because I like the way that they draft, especially with back-end picks. Their fan base will tell you, this, this, we already have multiple picks in. It's a late pick. Mm-hmm. First-round pick is a first-round pick, especially – when you draft well, Pascal mm-hmm. Siakam, OG Ananobi, they know how to draft at the back end. The Mavericks, on the other hand, have not shown me that I need to value their first-round picks because their picks and how they develop them, yeah. The best pick in recent memory that they got was Derek Lively, who was a 10th pick. Mm-hmm. This team will not have the 10th pick. You know what I mean? Like Josh Green, we can't, like I like Josh Green, but it's like, yeah. Uh, Hardy, it was cool because he was a second-round pick, kind of mm-hmm. failed to you. They haven't really had, and you know, them them picks in them twenties. You usually those are the like that's the rounds where you can find those guys that's like multi year or spent multiple years in college, have established roles that they already knew. Like they they have, you could see they have two three years of they shot forty percent from three, so you know it's consistent. Like those are really valuable rounds. Again, if you know what you're doing, that's, that's what I was saying in my mm-hmm. video. Like 
P, I don't get that that argument from fans because, like you just said, Hami Hakez, Desmond Bain was picked late, Jimmy yep. Butler was picked late. You know, who was picked in the 20s. Uh, Emmanuel quickly, I believe Tyrese Maxey was in the 20s or 21 or something. Like, if you know how to draft mm-hmm. and you have multiple picks, like the Raptors do. You're sure, you're you're sure something is gonna something's mm-hmm. gonna get out of there. Yeah. Not every single one. If you have three first round picks, you got one early, two in the back end. You're gonna hit on something. You're gonna hit on something, man. You're gonna hit I, on something. I don't mind it as much, because Oche Abaji is a guy that was a first round pick a year and a half ago. He has not played great this season. Obviously, yeah. he had a very good rookie season. Though. The rookie, the second half of his rookie season yeah. is really good. So maybe Masai is looking like, are we gonna draft somebody with the 27th overall pick that's better than Oche Abaji? Maybe mm-hmm. not. So we're okay with giving I think that, yeah. that was yeah. That was the other point that I made. Where like maybe people are higher on Ocha than I am. I'm not high on him. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. old too. He's like 23. I like I, 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 unless people are evaluating what he did at Kansas, then that, cool. But as far as the NBA, on a team like the Jazz, you weren't able to carve out a, a role on a team that's like everybody's kind of getting some shit. Fontecchio, really? You couldn't really outproduce Fontecchio <laughs> for minutes. I just don't. I, me personally, I just. Hey, Fontecchio's real, real. I didn't see it. Well, let's get back. Let's get back to the original deal. You gave a grade for the Mavericks of an A. I'm pretty sure. I what did. about you, Pierre and Mike? I'm um, Pierre and Derek. I'm gonna give them a B plus. Yeah, it's around a B range. I, I can't say it's an A just because I feel like A is like you're getting. I think it moves the needle for you. I don't think this deal for me moved it a lot. Makes so it didn't put them into contention. No, range, no, so sure. it didn't. Re- it didn't really move the needle that much. It, but to me, it, contention is so far just because of the other teams, but they got better. They did get better. They, they got and better yeah, to me. I, I would say that, A too. A lot better. Um, I feel like they're one of those teams that's just like you really don't want to go against because obviously how good Luka is, he can, he can get you out of a round in the playoffs. Keep adding to that. Get that get that one uh, that puncher's chance. And I, I think they they um they play tonight. They play against uh, yeah, OKC. Yeah, P.J. Washington and them so. are probably going to make their debut. I think a lot of people are finally making their debut. Yesterday yeah. I tuned into the Raptors like, Kelly Olenek going to play OT. They were no. suited up and everything, and they didn't play. Yeah, they tonight they played uh, OKC, who just got Gordon Hayward. So The um, OKC. I heard he got a new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he? No. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Gordon Hayward's not playing. Um, uh, Mark Daynoff said he won't play until after the, the, the All-Star break. Okay. He's going to wear number 33. He's last worn by who? In OKC? Yeah. Last one by Mike Muscala. Uh, oh, okay. oh, I thought it was somebody that was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to give the Mavs a B. What about the flip side of this? I mean, we tend to talk about the person, the team that got the real talent back. What about for the, the Hornets? Trading P.J. Washington again, getting that first-round pick um, and I mean, some stuff back. Well, a team that's rebuilding first-round picks, bring them in. You might as well. Like, there's – there's nothing but a benefit for you as a rebuilding team to consistently just stack up your picks. Because mm-hmm. even if you're stacking up your picks, let's say Lamella becomes all NBA guard, he's hooping, now there's a disgruntled star available. Now you have a boatload of picks, you can put those together and go get a star. Or you just keep drafting and keep putting talent around them. So like it just helps you just continue to build around your franchise player. Yeah. That dude right here, he ain't said one thing wrong. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, like, they have Lamelo still, which is like their building block. And Brandon they have Brandon Miller's playing. Brandon, Miller's Brandon, Brandon Miller's Miller's is still playing well. They got three. It's like I guess Miles. Technically. What you said? Who? Brand, uh, Grant Mark Williams. Mark Williams. Out another four weeks. Yeah, no, he's won't with be no for real time. like direction for where you're at right now. Stock up on them picks because yes. you just never know when you could use them. But we'll get to it eventually. They got Trey Man. They did. Those are the type that. of deals that they should be I doing. I think they had yeah. a really good deadline, yeah. all things considered. You know, Trey Mann was a guy in OKC that was out of rotation, and I'm happy to now see him in a new light. Because mm-hmm. he showed us some flashes in OKC. Lamelo, he might take your spot. <laughs> <I'm just playing. laughs> Trey Mann got crazy. real game, That would be crazy. Yeah. They could play together yeah, at, at worst. At worst. What would you grade it for the Hornets? I would give it. They got back Seth Curry and then the remains of Grant Williams' contract. I would give it like a, a B, solid B. I yeah. give it the same thing. Grant Williams, the Grant Williams contract is, doesn't affect them. They, they have. I hate teams like that where they act they like money. They should have added more contracts. Low yes, key. Yeah. like you're not about to spend anything in free agency. Yeah, yeah I'm guessing Seth Curry is a buyout guy, or I guess it's possible. I, 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 I don't really see, it. I don't see him staying on that team yeah. very long. Let's, I mean, Hell, buyout uh, Grant Williams. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, and, and we'll we'll stick to the other half of that deal with um, the Daniel Gaffer trade. From the Wizards' perspective, Rashawn Holmes, who's got an extra year after this year, and then a 2024 first-rounder for Daniel Gafford. I, I mean, think getting a first-rounder for Gafford is amazing. 
I don't think yeah. they had an amazing deadline because Tyus Jones still on the team, but the mm. trade that they did do, I liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of the two names that you would want them to move and Tyus Jones and Kuzma are still on the roster. Mm-hmm. But I, Gaffer was a surprise for me. Yeah. I, you wasn't, know what? I didn't think he was going to be dealt. I was more so looking at Tyus and Kuzma. I'm the, not mad at the non Kuzma, at the non DeJounte, at the non Jeremy Grant trades because what are we rushing for? If yeah. you if the market is looking around and say, oh man, there's not a lot of picks, there's not a lot of young players that we can get back for Kuzma. It's not like he's an expiring contract. For yeah. sure, Dejounte's not expiring, so let's just keep him. And then I, I said this well, for these the guys literally just signed an extension. Exactly. If the Lakers wanted Dejounte, they got one first round pick to give us right now. If they want him in the offseason, they have three tradable first round picks. I will just wait. And it's not like yeah. the Atlanta Hawks are god ass awful. They're bad, but they're not god ass awful. Absolutely. So it's like, and they've been playing better the last two weeks, so we gonna take our chances in the play in. And then if we want to break up this core, we'll do it in the off season where we'll get more assets, more people will have money to trade. Um, people like the Philadelphia 76ers who have no real aspects outside of the the free agency period because Kawhi resigned, uh, Pascal Siakam like he's gonna resign, and Paul George is like the guy I guess they're going after. If He'll they can't, <laughs> I think so too. If they can't get one of those top end talents at free agency. Hell, we got three first round picks to trade now. So if I'm the Atlanta Hawks, I want those three first round picks for Dejounte. I agree. I, I'm I'm disappointed from a fan perspective. Yeah, that one hundred percent. But I do agree. Tyus Jones, DeLon Wright, and Daniel Gafford are all guys that I was looking at to get moved. And I'm happy that they did move Gafford. I thought OKC would be a player in that. Mm-hmm. He ended up going to the Mavericks. But I feel like DeLon Wright and Tyus Jones could have got you something at yeah. the least. You know what I mean? And never seemed like it was a lot of teams interested in Tyus Jones. We had the Timberwolves. They obviously got Monte Morris, the Spurs, um, the Lakers. Uh, there's a lot of teams. I guess with the Spurs would have been so nice. They're going to get Killian Hayes in a couple. Him yeah, and I think, yeah, we were talking about that at, when we was at the Bucks game. That Killian would probably would be a spur. Yeah. And then he's going to look so good. Because the one thing about Killian Hayes, his ass cannot score. He'll get that big fella the ball. He will. <laughs> and that's all they really need from a point guard at this moment in time. True. If you could get 48 minutes – between Trey Jones, who does give Wimby the ball, and Killian Hayes, who do, who will give Wimby the ball, you feel pretty good if you're a Spurs fan. And then you just go into the offseason and get Nikola Topic. Yep, who is a uh, – uh, oh, damn, I saw something on Twitter today that was funny. A more fundamentally sound LaMelo ball. <laughs> <laughs> does that sound weird to any of y'all? Yeah. That, okay. that sounds very weird. Okay, good to get that I wasn't the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Some something a little off about that, by the Who way. Who said this? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just saw a screenshot of somebody else that was tweeting. And an off season, the Spurs can move Kelda potentially. Yeah, maybe somebody will want him. What's going on with Kelda? I don't know. It's kind of odd. It is odd. Odd to see him falling out of like he's now coming off the bench. He was like a legit starter for the he first. He was the few third seasons. man off the bench two nights ago. Yeah, third that, man off the bench. At the top of the year, he was a third best player in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Vic, Devin Vassell, and then it was okay. him and Sohan. Yes. Yeah, I mean. Pop know what he doing. Hey, shout out to Sohan. His shoe game has been kicking up. Oh, I don't know if y'all know. been peeping. Mm-hmm. I have not been. His shoe game shoes. has been pe- it's been ramping up. I'm only time t- I really know the shoes is when they're mismatch. You know, because like, it's hard not to know. Yeah, the only miss. thing I really be know like I know this on uh, like the y'all know the, Rus- the Russells that used to go up. Yeah. yeah, he was wearing those. I always like look good. They okay, look good. I always be noticing the Hardens when I'm on the court. Oh like, yeah, the Hardens. Look, every like, time the I Hardens see them, I nice. just like I can recognize them. Best basketball shoe in the and game also, right now. And um, also the Grinches, like the Kobe oh, Grinches. Yeah, everybody yeah. that wears yeah. it, it just sticks out so much. Those with green are the shoes. Reverse. You know, when we were at the Bucks game, they did like a a little kids were playing basketball on the court or whatever. All of them had the Sabrina Ionescu zone. Oh yeah, and I was like those. And they had so their names written on the side. Yes, bro. They were so clean, bro. That her shoe and the Hardens are like. If I played basketball still, I would be hooping in those shoes. The new Kyrie's are, sure. the new Kyrie's are decent, too. The Antas? The Antas. They the look pretty clean. clean. They look yeah. pretty clean. Those are, those are clean, too. Yeah. And they got that done fast. I feel like he just signed there like a month yes, ago. He, yeah. Said, we're going to get our Siggies out. Hey, I don't blame him. He well, was he one of the number one shoe sellers. Season. Did he? Yeah. He oh. went on a little tour and everything. Why do I feel like he just signed there? Yeah, it was in the offseason. Oh, okay. Word. Then they but did. Sabrina does have the best shoe. Yeah. And it, the, the fact that you can customize them. Like Nike ID back when we was kids, yeah. man. I, I did that recently. I cut the like, oh, Humble, Humble Beast on. Beast. I might have to get. get I did a night, I did a Sabrina one, but I didn't buy it. <laughs> That's the most fun part. <laughs> Just get creative. <laughs> I kind of like ID's still a thing. I, I, yeah, yeah, I kind of like her own ones. I, I like yeah, her colorways are clean. Yeah. She's got like a peach colorway that I, I really yep. really like. She has a duck one, Oregon duck mm-hmm. one. Um, they have like and a she about the bus Steph Curry ass at All Star Week. That's gonna be dope. I don't know about all that. We you don't know see. about that? 
It's the best shoot in the world. We'll talk about it on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> next big deal to happen at the deadline. Get ready. The Knicks acquire Alec Burks and Bojan Bogdanovic. They send out Evan Fournier, Malachi Flynn, who was there for two and a half weeks, it felt like. Uh, <laughs> Quinn Grimes. Uh, Ryan Archidiakono, they messed up the Villanova boy thing, but I think it's worth it. Bulls legend. Two second round picks and some cash considerations. This Boom. is this is so funny because this is the almost exact trade I drew up on our trade deadline special. But this is why they're the professionals and I'm not. I gave away a first. Yeah. You don't need to do and that. And I didn't include I didn't include uh, Malachi Flynn. So they were able to get off our extra body mm-hmm. and retain the first and give out two seconds. Yeah. I was I'm, close, but yeah, that's why they the professionals. Work, I'm surprised that they were able to get that much talent back for two seconds. That I think that just and the, Quinn Grimes. Yeah, I think this is why teams sometimes just stay packed because they know at the deadline teams will get desperate. And they'll give you a little less. Well, for two years, the Piss has been telling us that Bojan is untouchable. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, they couldn't fumble it this time. They, they turned Man. down two first-round picks but last th- year. That's, that's the point. Crazy, they fumbled bro. it because they fumbled it. Yeah. If you do it, you, there's a saying, hey, you get it what? while the getting's good. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? There's another team who we'll talk about who did no trades that didn't want to do this deal because they held on too long. And the value of DeMar DeRozan <laughs> <laughs> was a lot like what you got for Bojan Bogdanovic. <laughs> Because you didn't trade him last year. Yeah. Like the Knicks traded, think about it this way. The Knicks traded two second round picks to Quinn Grimes, who had in the rotation, out the rotation, yeah. wanted to trade, if, if we're being honest. It seemed like both parties were ready to move mm-hmm. on from each other. For, and for, I'm happy for him. Bo Yabagdanov is probably there for the rest of the season. He yeah. might get resigned, obviously, but like more likely than not, there's going to be a team that's the, the Pistons, like, you know what? We do got 64 mil. You want to come back? Right. Uh, these are people to help them right now. Yes, right. For two seconds. So if they walk in free agency, ain't no big deal because we, we the Knicks, we still got 10 other players that are real basketball players. Yeah. And I love it. I, I mean, if there's any deal to get an A-plus today, it is it's this one. one. A-plus. It is this one. And it's uh, not even close. It added depth. <laughs> um, they're a team that sometimes, when it came to playoff time, we saw last year they could struggle to score sometimes. They added a lot of a big offensive punch. 240 for points. Like, for 240% three-point shooters. And it just, it adds a lot, especially when you're now missing Julius Randle for an extended period of time. Old mm-hmm. you know we'll be out for an extended period of time right now. And you just added bodies that can you know start. Win basketball. Yeah, to yeah, start. Can start, yeah. Can start and come in and win basketball games. So, and it just gives, it relieves some pressure off Jalen Brunson, man. A lot when of pressure off When him. this team is at full strength, man, this team is going to be yeah. scary. Alec Burks coming off the bench now. It's, it's going to be very fun. The only team I really I feel like he would just, like, Alec Burks is just icing. If, I, if he comes in and he's like off the bench, and he got 15, 20, hey, he doing his thing. Shit, if he can give me 11. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's just the icing on the cake. I think Bojan was like the real thing here. Like, he could fit Not a fire on, dress, the real thing. He <laughs> could fit on literally 29 other teams. Yeah. Like, he moves without the ball, catch and shoot, can play off catch and shoot. And like I said, he's always been a good shooter. Uh, they need that for real. I know when they play my Lakers, and obviously they're shorthanded, but we was letting them shoot. You yeah. can't do that when Bojan's on the floor. And no, I know people have talked to his defenses. Not the same, but playing with Thibodeau, He'll somehow somehow your defense yeah. gets an extra plus five to your I, I, I always, I always <laughs> wonder. That's coach boots, hell yeah. I always wonder what people say that, like, what do they be meaning? If, if I play I, for the for, damn Pistons, my Why defense, am I defending? I don't like that argument. Why not? It's do you not, not like winning so basketball? It's not, why, it's not why I'm defending, but it's like my defense isn't going to stand out to you if I'm on the Pistons. That's, so, that's different. Unless it's you been a couple of years, too, cases. since we've seen him like actually be in that mode to try to lock, not lock somebody down, but slow somebody down, play good defense. It's been like since 2018. It's been a couple of <laughs> years. So, I mean, them joints not moving the same way. So yeah. I'm not expecting. But nobody and nobody like, needs him to guard LeBron for yeah. a seven-game series yeah. no more. It's yeah. over with. Yeah. They don't need that in New York. The stuff is rolling. They got defenders over there. Winning basketball alivens you, though. Yeah, it does. I definitely for sure. Say that it enlivens. What, what I said on, on the and other show, the garden probably does. Is that f- f- one of the one of the question marks? And I don't even think it's real, but like you have to have to think about trades both ways. Um, like, okay, well, the Knicks have so many players. How do you keep everybody happy? These boys went from the worst team in the league to a team that's, that's going to be one of the better playoff teams. They'll be fine if they go from a 30-minute per game guy to maybe a 20-minute per game because winning does all. And the best thing to happen and, and the worst thing to happen is OG and R- Randall are out. Yeah. So these guys immediately come in and they're going to get their 30 minutes to start off with because they have no choice at this moment in time. Yeah. So they kind of they get that, that immediate uh, boost of endorphins 
yeah. from being on a good team and playing a bunch of minutes, and then eventually they're going to see their minutes drop a little bit, and it's going to be worth it because they're going to be winning basketball I think games. That's, that's a lot less pressure on them, too. Like, for Boyan and Burks, too, like, they were counted on to score the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, Boyan needed a good 20. He needed to shoot the ball from, like, deep. Coming off the bench, like, w- what they give is an attitude. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they need to be productive, but it's like, man, I don't need to have 20 points for my team to have a chance no more. Mm-hmm. I just need to come out, play solid solid defense or whatever, play good basketball, and knock down my shot. And, hey, we look, we up double digits now. That didn't happen. Yeah. I used to hit a, I used to hit five shots. We were still down 15 <laughs> in, in Detroit. I'm not familiar with Boyan as far as how, he, how he'll feel about his minutes or whatever. Yeah. But Burks has been probably one of the most professional guys mm-hmm. in his career because mm-hmm. he's done every role. He started. He was a lottery pick. Then he's been a backup on Philadelphia, mm-hmm. the Warriors. Then he's been a backup on the Knicks before. So he always seems to just be a, a high-level professional in whatever his number is called to start, bench, score, pass, whatever he's going to do. I think this is like the best vibes you've felt in New York. It seems like it's such a selfless culture. It is the seems best like, New York-built team of our lifetime. Yeah, I, it, even like everybody's like bought into the culture. Even like Julius Randle. Are you Randall. sure about that? Julius Randle. pretty Randall's, damn sure. We lost NBA Finals when we was kids. <laughs> okay, in our our cognitive <laughs> lifetime. Okay, just saying. <laughs> People gonna hear that and be like, "Y'all, weren't y'all born in the night?" <laughs> but yeah, I think the Villanova boys have like brought like a different vibe and a different culture to the team that is. And they, pod- they podcasting. Yeah, they podcasting. Stay, yeah. stay the fuck out of I, my lane. I feel like they they didn't <laughs> like change the culture. I feel like they were perfect for the culture. In mm. terms of like Josh Hart and like the villain Dante DiMincenzo, they don't do nothing but hustle. I think the benefit, <laughs> Anything, like and Tom Thibodeau was like, give me thirty five minutes of that. Yeah. The benefit is, in my opinion, you have guys who aren't stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like the biggest, and again, this is not a star, but the biggest guy that we had that was like was like R.J. Bear. He's a third overall pick. He came into New York. They supposed to hand on the team, but the actual guy, the face of our teams. J- Jalen Brunson, he's he's already played as with Luca. He's not really like a star. He wasn't pampered. Julius Randle came in on a Kobe. Yeah. Nobody gave a nobody gave really two two dams that they was getting Julius Randle when he was a rookie and broke his leg and shit. That was really the Kobe show. And by the time Julius Randle came back, they was already getting more new talent in. So I think that is a big factor too. We don't have like a legitimate. He's a star. He's the the guy type of attitude in so i, I yeah. think it does create a better environment versus having somebody who's like man this is my shit mm-hmm. yeah who team this is mine it's such a selfless coach over there right now and <laughs> yeah. i love it uh, they have no ball stoppers yeah Boyan and alec burks are swinging that ball <laughs> he's talking about oh, julius okay, julius, julius. Yeah. you can get away with one <laughs> and if he's your se- first or second sometimes it'd be for the best though so if especially if he's got it going you, you I don't mind it sometimes. Like, Julius Randle. Julius Randle. I, Randle. I, Randle. I, Randle. Julius. I didn't, the Julius. Way he I didn't t- even think about Julius. The way his face <laughs> turned at you when he said, they don't got no ball stop. He, hey, as long as you're playing the way he is, ball stop. But yeah. he does do it. You sometimes know, he, he gets over his head, but Some with this talent three, now, it's, it's, it should be less of it. Mm-hmm. Should Some be of less those threes do be a little questionable. Yeah. But when they go in, <laughs> when they go in, he's a player that at this part of being a Nick fan, you just live with it. Yeah, you learn. It's just like jazz fans. You think jazz fans love every Clarkson three? When he, when we, Clarkson does is every team got it, that person that you just live with? Because for you, it would probably have to be Demar, right? No, probably Kobe. You White, just right? live with it. You just live with Kobe. You White. think I'm living with? I mean, you had no choice. If Kobe White turns the ball over seven straight possessions, I'm like, come on, Kobe, you got him. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's <laughs> my point. <laughs> there are certain guys that like like Jordan. I love the Jordan Clarkson one yeah. because when he makes it, it's like that shot is. crazy. That's an incredible shot, but he missed it, and you like that's the stupidest shot I've ever seen. But the Warriors ain't a Clay Thompson now. Yes. Oh man. Unfortunately. Shit. <laughs> Who is it for y'all? Um, Probably D-Lo? Anthony, Anthony Davis. I'm gonna go D'Lo. I think it's D'Lo or either Austin Reeves. All star D'Lo, man. You been hooping. Last night was incredible. Bro, he's yeah. been amazing. Because <laughs> if he misses the shot against the Warriors, the transition shot, the oh transition my God. you're like, that's yeah. a terrible shot. Yeah. He <laughs> makes <laughs> it, and it's like, that is an incredible shot. Okay. <laughs> um, traits, I mean, uh, grades, I gave it an A-plus for the Knicks. Hey, yeah, A-plus. A plus, a. Plus. A plus. And then what about that's the other side for the Pistons? Hey, I really, I like the straight for the Pistons because I think Quentin Grimes is the type of player that they need. You don't like it? C-minus, man. You t- wait C-minus is good. 
It's passable. Yeah. C's do get degrees. Hey, well, if you had a C, would you I, able yeah. to play? I, I, I passed <laughs> college with a bunch of C's and one D. I got the degree. But I see what you're saying, though, KB. Yeah. They, they just have, waited too far. They, long, they had the man. chance to get two firsts for him, and now you get two seconds. But Quentin Grimes is a plus player. There was, there was think, no world where it's like you holding on for Bojan for any reason at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like some teams hold on to assets thinking like we're about to go. DeJounte. DeJounte, right. We, yeah. There's a world we could turn us. There was nothing. Because yeah, even the ceiling of the Pistons this year about? was like they might no, win no, 30 no. games. No, no, no. It was because they had that dry hope that a lot of fans did coming into the season. Remember, people thought the Pistons would be all right. They thought they'd be kind of like wins. the Rockets. 30 wins. I thought we were talking about like – oh. The same thing for for Alec Burks too. Wasn't he in trade rumors last year? He and was. was like he could go to the Bucks. He can go here. He can yeah, go but here. they wanted to keep them yeah. because K was going to be healthy, yeah. and they would, that's that's what they was thinking. So <sighs> I don't know what they lost twenty seven. I'm gonna straight. give him a C. And then on top of that, yeah, I'm gonna give him a C because that, that, they have to have something positive. But then on top of that, Trey Weaver's first draft pick under this regime was Killing Hayes, and you release him. Yeah. To that have actually, a seventh yeah, overall pick, that's that's not to make me go down on my grade. Yeah, to, wave. To, wave. to wave your seventh overall pick is crazy. Joe Harris waved. Yeah. Joe Harris made double digit millions of dollars, and that's he got it. waved. Yep. You couldn't get, you couldn't just throw him. Hey, Leon Rose, just take. Them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, uh, Wizards, the Grizzlies, y'all got 13 guys hurt. Just take Joe Harris. Just give us a fax machine. Yeah. You couldn't do that. <laughs> no Killian Hayes wasn't worth a free dinner, steak dinner. Did Killian Hayes set himself up by requesting out? Yeah. Like, are you on out, motherfucker? Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Man. Hey, next time we play y'all, you owe me dinner. You, y'all couldn't make one of those happen for mm -hmm. Killian Hayes. <laughs> Not a second round pick of 2035. Did y'all see the Jay Nivey stuff? No. Two minutes after Jay, or after Killian Hayes got released, Jay Nivey uploaded a picture on Instagram of him and Kate. <laughs> two minutes. I, I did see that. I did two see minutes, that. and then it had like a Bible verse that I didn't. He's on it. my trade block. <laughs> <laughs> He's on my trade block because if you in your mind think that the reason your blessing or your no, talent was, stopped was for Killian Hayes, Killian Hayes was starting over him. He was. But that, that means was there was something he was doing in practice no. that we don't see. No, I, no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, no. I'm with P on this one. No, I'm with yeah, P no. on this one. I think inexcusable. The reason he started over him because Monty Williams said he wanted to build a defensive identity on a team that was fucking awful. Jay Nivey should have defended. And, now and to Mo Monty Williams. I don't care, I don't care <laughs> if he's the worst defender in the Monty's world. To Monty Williams' defense, Jay Nivey seems like a better six man than Killian Hayes. I like Jay Nivey coming off my bench. What about him playing 18 minutes? Even coming I can't defend that. They yeah. lost yeah. two. But again, this is a team where I'm not defending shit <laughs> for a team that lost 28 <laughs> games in a row. Yeah. Hey, he's starting now. That's why he's Piston winning, fans piss me basketball. off. When they when they released Killian Hayes, I said, man, I would sign Killian Hayes right now. I would sign him immediately. I don't care. You had Piston fans in my mentions, like I said, so, well, he must not know. Are Y'all are being arrogant? <laughs> you lost 28 games in a row and you talking down on somebody? Mm -hmm. When you draft a player, it is a marriage. So when they don't pan out, it's the player's responsibility. It's the franchise's. Right. Unless we find out somebody just got an eating disorder and they 375 pounds into camp. That ain't Killian Hayes. Mm -hmm. It's development and then the player's work ethic. And then Monty Williams, all they asked him about this like during the press. He was like, well, he was never able to put it together off <laughs> offensively. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just tough for us I, to I'm, keep up. I'm with, uh, with what P said, though. It's just like just because Killian Hayes, we released him and out of minutes or whatever, don't think you could just relax now. Like, you can almost run the show with He did Kane have a nice little game. Though. He's had he has, five he's had, straight he's great games. Easy. But he's been that, 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 he had that one that and was like. Oh, yeah, he, career high. Yeah. I think they've won three of their last seven. That's actually you kinda, couldn't stop? <laughs> I said they're going to win 20 games this year. Uh, that's yeah. that's as much stock hey, you can put into a team that won That's part of being good, but being good, bad. Mm. Yes, because they beat some bad teams. It's yeah. so wild. When they were on their streak, you could actually put down for them not to win a game for the rest of the season. Yeah. And people thought like. That's this a bet is, worth taking. Bro, you know how hard that bet is that's to win? The and the odds probably bet ever. Like, that's just Vegas being like, we got them. No team is losing 60 straight games in the no NBA. No way, No bro. way. You, you got to have, have one game. good night. You got to yeah, have I was gonna one, say, good, one exactly. good night where you're hot and the other team just not. Like, yep. it's just a, it's a possibility you're going to catch the Raptors after they traded away O.J. and they got seven players. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what's going to happen. Or you're going to catch a team on a back-to-back that don't really care I'm about I'm so glad I missed that, though. I did not see that. That would have pissed me off. Jaden Ivey, the Killian Hayes should not be on your mind, brother. He, just he was got probably looking at him across the locker room like, he's starting over me? He just got waved. 
got waved. In the I think NBA, that's just, that's just part of maturity. It's, NBA, they're, they're young. you don't get waved. Uh, like as a, a lottery pick, you get waived as a thirty nine year old. But you yeah. know he's gonna get more chances because every lottery pick gets more. As than you one. should. Yep. As you should. So I got Bender got five teams. Yes. So I was trying to tell the Pistons to fans too. Right. Y'all talking about a second? Aren't y'all the team that draft? I mean that that signed Josh Jackson. Josh Weren't Jackson. y'all his fifth opportunity or fourth opportunity? Stand the man. Now y'all act like y'all just eh, stop stop talking to me. Hey, hopefully Kenley Hayes can have his Dante Exum arc. Side of baby happy now probably. He ain't like Killian Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the rest of these trades um, in a minute, but first let's hear from our sponsor. Why should you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two words Caesar's Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesar's can offer hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Next biggest name move was Gordon Hayward being traded to the OKC I told- Thunder. I love I, this. I told Austin I was going to text him. I can't even text him. I need you. If you can, can you give me green tea? I got a headache. I need something. <laughs> I need like some coffee. That's my coffee. Why can't you text him? Because it, I, the ad went off. Uh-huh. Uh, we got Gordon Hayward going to the Thunder in exchange for Mitich, Trey Mann, Davis Bertans, two second round picks of 2024, 2025-er. And Gordon Hayward is free. I love this whole KC. Um we not only got a veteran wing in Gordon Hayward that can come in and just – he doesn't take away from your stars. Like, you you got a good complimentary role player in Gordon Hayward who's has shown consistently that when he's healthy, he plays good basketball. And I think that's just the only question mark with him is health. I agree and, with Derek. Mm-hmm. For me, I think when you bring in a guy that's not going to take away from Shea, Chet, J-Dub's development, and he's just only going to come in and compliment them, I think that's a no-brainer. Especially when it comes playoff time. Uh-huh. You need those veteran guys in there that – has been there a little bit. So now Gordon Hayward coming in, he he's the guy that's been there. That's the thing about this this trade deadline. There's not a lot of variety. Like, I think we're going to be very similar in our opinions on every trade, basically. That's one team true. looks better than the other one. Yeah. You know, and, and for Gordon Hayward, he was not a name that was on my radar for OKC. I thought they were going to go b- for big for because big. they Damn struggled down to, yeah. um uh, Andre Drummond was in conversations with him, whatever. Oh, but he didn't get moved too. The Bulls, <laughs> we'll, we'll, talk man. About, yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Did we forget how good Gordon Hayward is as a basketball player? Because he's always hurt. Say, yes. Yeah. 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 I know. Well, yeah. When he's healthy, he like he can affect the game in a lot of ways. What you gotta like as a basketball player, like I think he's literally one of the prototypical guys where you say like he plays the game the right way, like in a non funny <laughs> way. No, 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 no bullshit. I feel you. No, because literally, <laughs> like I've seen him have, I've seen him with games where he's had twenty points. I've seen him with, well, obviously more. I've seen him with games where he probably had like eight plus eight rebounds. I've seen him game where he had eight nine assists. Like he just plays the game as like he he takes what the defense gives to him. And he can hit and do all the little stuff in between, and I think they kind of need that. He's been very consistent, sixteen five and five for the last mm-hmm. couple of years. I said one um, of my favorite stat lines. I have not seen a lot of Gordon Hayward this season because mm-hmm. a I have not watched a lot of Hornets, and b the Hornets games I have watched his ass ain't suit up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I had to all of my opinions about Gordon Hayward this season is like me looking at stats. Like, oh, yeah, you know, he is one of the better mid-range jump shooters in basketball. He does put a ton of pressure on the rim, just like everybody else in OKC. He's going to fit like a glove, especially in those playoff series if you go against the Minnesota Timberwolves who decide we're going to put Rudy Gobert and Josh Giddy. Now you, you know got Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward is so much more of a threat offensively, and that's just opened things up. Yeah, I think Gordon Hayward comes in and starts immediately, and then Josh Giddy no, is now no, switched. No. I think he'll come off the starting. Yeah. Because their starting unit is one of the best units in basketball. Yeah, I, think, I don't think you – when you have some going like this, you don't touch your, mm-hmm. you don't touch your starting lineup. Right. Yeah, no. He's gonna come in. He gonna. Why you laugh? I'm not that. I'm, he, go ahead. No, we can go ahead. I'm just surprised they didn't just, go get a big. Yeah, that, that's all. Because they still have room for it. They have room for it. But I mean, they yeah. Feel and I don't see any bigs getting bought out or being on the buyout market. Mm-mm. Room for the money still. Room for improvement. What are we grading it? Um, uh, I would give it a. I would give it a B. A B. A A. Yeah, I'll give it an A. This is better than the Mavericks move. I think so a little bit, just because I think OKC is a better team, but and they went out and got a better piece <laughs> to where I think it elevates them a little bit more. Little. This, this to me is Bro, a you, how at least yeah. PJ Washington been suiting up and Daniel Gaff been suiting up. <laughs> you just talk Daniel Gaff. Uh, True, we don't I, even know how healthy Gordon Hayward is. He's he's not playing until after. So All-Star I think it was break. for a team that was as good as they are, the two seed. You just got better for the playoffs. Low risk, high reward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like it for Charlotte a lot. Trey mm-hmm. Mann, I think, is a guy that you should just, as a basketball fan, be happy that he's going into a situation where he's going to be able to play. 
Um, this is a dude who can play basketball at a high level, really good shot creator and shot maker at the guard position. But OKC is so talented, and they've accelerated the timeline so much that he's kind of, you know, is in that spot where he can't really play, and you can't fault them because you have Shea and, and all of these guys. So to see him go to a team that's going to give him minutes, it, that makes me happy. Um, yeah. Obviously, you much rather him be in a better environment because a lot has been going on in, in, in Charlotte. Even Steve Clifford, after every game, has something <laughs> something clippable to say about his own team. <laughs> but um, Which he's not lying. He's not lying. No, he's not he's lying. Not lying. Uh, Even though his days are numbered, he numbered. will not be there. He just letting season. everybody know, this ain't got shit to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all ain't do it? Hey, we just not talented. <laughs> like, oh, damn, he's That's, saying – He's saying that ain't me. And this is kind of like jumping back to the Hornets. That be, uh, just the Hornets organization and how they run things, it just scares me a little bit. Like, they're getting the first rounders in. They're getting Trey Mann. This is like, are you going to take care of what you need to do? Mm -hmm. Or is there going to be another story where it's like, they got him with that pick and he ain't do nothing? Luckily, you know it's, what I'm saying? it's a new regime. Huh? If Trey no, Mann don't do what he does, mm -hmm. we look at them because he did some shit. <laughs> he did some shit with the Thunder that made us all intrigued. Yeah. yeah. And like... The Pistons, they release James Book Knight, mm -hmm. a former lottery pick. Yeah. That one went under the radar because Killian Hayes. Um, <laughs> but James Book Knight is 20 times worse than Killian Hayes. Dang. I, and I mean that, and I mean that for real, for real. This I, he is a lottery pick on a team that was also on a 17 ish game, like lost a bunch of games. At least Killian Hayes. He a wasn't star. getting minutes. <laughs> Killian Hayes started, and maybe again, he probably shouldn't have been started, but he, he would have got minutes. James yeah. Booknight couldn't see the floor. It's a shame. He was going back between the swarm and <laughs> shooting twenty six percent in the G League. He was a he was a six man in one of, uh, in one of our leagues. I had James yeah, Booknight because that's the type of shit he liked. Just like you be using Azabuki. Oh uh, yeah, I, bro, Azabuki gonna clean that glass. <laughs> see what I'm saying? <laughs> see what I'm saying? But yeah, that that's oh, that's uh, yeah. I, I like it though for both sides to be able to get something they can use. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just looking at James Book like Book Knight's numbers. He's played five games this season. Let me let me let me five, let me pull single, one hand. Let me pull him up on how Ducks many. What do you think his career high is? That's a very let's play that game. James Book Knight. I'm gonna career say high. 27. 20. I was gonna say you think it's in the 20s. I, yeah, I, I, I bet it's 20. not. I bet it's in the 20s. I'm going go to go 20 point. Game. I'm gonna go 10. I remember vividly. I'm gonna say 18 point game. You say 18. I said 20. You I'm said 24. It's exactly 24. Oh wow, that's exactly 24. Um, yeah, 20, 24 point game. Who How many against? 20 point games has he had? If that's his only 20 point game, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, Anybody could get 20. I might, if you give me enough minutes, I might fuck around and get 20 in the NBA game. On the Hornets? <laughs> it it could have been like <laughs> You doubting me? That's going to be tough. You doubting me? I guess what team? If I, if I go to, if I go to, what is it called? Training camp mm -hmm. and I'm training with them and I get in my top tier shape. And I get 18 minutes a game, and somebody get hurt, and that 18 go to 33 one game. You think I can't get 20 at my highest peak level? 20 I'm, points is a lot. That is a lot. They're not throwing. <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Listen, no. They're say not no. throwing no. me. They're not throwing me right here off this couch into there. I'm yeah. training. Yeah, I know. I understand. I completely understand that. I'm I completely practicing understand. every day. I'm getting the nutrition that the players are eating. The massages. What team are you going I, against? I, 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 definitely not the the Bucks. You going I'm against the Hornets? I'm going against the Blazers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going against the Blazers. Okay. Tumani Kamara's going to help. That's a lot. I'm going to say no. I think the still reason still I say no. I don't know because I feel like 20 points is hard to come by just playing in the flow of the offense. Hey, listen, Mike. If you get me, the ball and you like, man, they I'm give, getting this bucket. They give me three years in the NBA, I'm getting a 24-point game. They give me three years. How many How many 20-point games did he have in his career, if you have to guess? Three. That is a very good guess. Two. I'm going to go it, four. It's three. Okay. Very, and very he good played guess. 79 games in three years, and he had three 20-point games. Yeah. Now, I'm not making that argument. I got to play more than 79 games. <laughs> <laughs> I got to play uh, – give me 81 times three. We just talk about how everybody get a second – is somebody giving James Booknight another contract? Absolutely. Absolutely. Chicago <laughs> Bulls. After seeing what, what happened with Malik Monk. <laughs> Stop. I might take a chance yes. on anybody coming yes. out of Charlotte. He is that mold too. He is I that might have mold. to take a chance on anybody coming mold. out of Charlotte because I just, I just don't know if they know San what they're Antonio, doing. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, come on. They already got a bunch of non-passing people on their team. Career average in assists per game? 0 0.5. 9, 0 0.9. That's, almost, that's one. You round up, it's one. Yep, an assist per. Who else is I that? I feel like also your assist. Toronto Raptors. Brrr. 
James Book, like, let's see what you got. Gary Trent Jr. is not coming back on this team next year. Hey, his part 36 this year been kind of crazy. Hold on. In five games? Honestly, <laughs> with, the, with the injuries we got, Grizzlies might as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro. The injuries we got, we but might no, be they, also, they don't need him to get in the way of Gigi Jacks. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Gigi for getting his bag, too. Yes, he yes. did. That's good. Yes, yes, he did. Um, His part 36 numbers this season, 22 points per game, four rebounds, three assists, 44% from the field, 43% from three. Sign him. Sign them right now. Mm-mm. Those are good numbers. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> that's what organizations numbers. do. They have a guy that's doing what KB doing right now. Looking at, looking at Per 36. That's what I was saying. They should just call I don't that even t- like looking at Per 36. <laughs> I don't bro. either. I don't. Call that job title. They should call it convincers. Because all mm. they're doing is convincing the GM that we should take a chance. Drummond's rebound in Per 36 numbers must be ridiculous. That's a fact. Like, <laughs> well, he's a top five rebound of all time. Let him tell he's, well, the, he's best the best of all time. All, all time. Yeah. He said, forget Bill Russell. And all of the other. Wash, uh, all is, Johnny, of is Johnny Davis next? Uh, Bro, I remember I put not. that his thing. G League hey, another, another guy that Mike picked up in our league and, and just used. Hey, no, no, no. You know what? He was so bad, he didn't make the rotation no more. <laughs> but I remember you drafting him, I, and you liked him at first. What's Drummond's per 36 rebounds? I don't remember if I drafted him or I traded for him. Oh, you might I might have traded, traded from, but he was bad. He was bad. On the head? Yeah, <laughs> we just on the head. That's all we do is put. But I remember I put the <laughs> I put the stats of a game from a G League game for Johnny Davis, and it was like it was like in twenty minutes he had like zero points, couple turnovers, missed shots. I'm like, this is a G League game, bro. What would you do in a G League game? I might feel more confident with the twenty points in the G League <laughs> game. They don't defend nothing in the G League. Hey, every, I'm getting mine in the NBA. They don't defend nothing in the NBA. I'm getting mine. <laughs> if I'm in shape and I'm with the NBA Let player, me catch the paces on the right day. Iron sharpen. <laughs> that, for real. <laughs> iron, you know, boy, you ain't got the lung capacity to keep up with the paces. Iron, no, sharp, uh, yeah. iron sharpens iron, man. You put me in there and I was with Gordon Hayward as my vet. LaMelo. <laughs> I play the paces. You huh? see everybody over there. You saw LeBron tweet about all the jewelry and uh, stuff. Yeah. And somebody put the horse. That, yep. <laughs> and, and, and it was funny. Somebody said Brandon Miller looked stunned at those prices. <laughs> like, because his face when he was looking at the price, yeah. he did look a And little... we know him based off the 30 minute experience yeah. how he is. I play the paces. I'm definitely resulting to that point defense. You don't even get back. You just. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got That's get- how Kyron be playing, bro. That's how Kyron play at the gym. Yeah, he be like, might pick him up. Yeah, he not even walking back. He's he saying, like- might pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyrie, Kyrie doesn't point out Hall of Fame. He's doing this. Uh, what's the next trade? Buddy Hill get traded to the 76ers for four con Corkmans, Doug McDermott, second hey, round pick, second round pick. Corkmans finally, getting his, finally getting his trade request. Right? But then he got waived. Waived. So he's so. he's out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> That's been, just funny to him too. Right. He just started cracking His whole up. Whole livelihood go. You laughing he, right he, now? He going. He going. That was a long time ago. He went to Starbucks. You got it. We got to go. Hey, he went. To, he went to Starbucks. Thank you. I thought Aaron's I, runner. I thought. Hold on. I thought this was coming out of the vending machine. Over <laughs> kill. Over kill. You know, I was just Thank telling you. Elena KB. What's up? When we was at COD and we had our good buddy. He was older in Mr. James' class. We had a simple you assignment. You drunk some of this? No, I'm just playing. We had a simple assignment. We had to answer five questions to read part of this book. Oh, y'all talking when that dude came in? Came in with a whole project. He talking about, y'all did y'all project? <laughs> everybody everybody looking around like, what is he talking and about? Te- I hope the teacher was mad. He talking about, I got a whole business proposal. Bro, he put I put together a whole business plan. Name of business, logos, the goals of the business <laughs> for the next five. Like, he went crazy. And the, what Mike said is true. We had to answer five questions. It would have took you seven minutes to do the homework. He had to spend five hours. What minimal. was the teacher's response? I don't remember. I think he was actually just like, he was astonished that he actually did that. Yeah, I think teachers should do you remember do what that the business was? You no. just gave me, I didn't even. Thinking about. He gave the teacher. Was it like Ray? Ray, yeah. <laughs> thinking about who you know Ray was. Was it like auto repair or something yes, like that? Bro, yeah, he, he, he looked like a mechanic. Business, yeah. he, looked, he reminded me of a mechanic. Business. Um, but Is he, he successful trade? with his business today? Because y'all <laughs> laughing. You and you might know. be taking y'all car to him, so don't laugh at him. Well, not my car. My car's okay. You know one of the. Damn. You know one of the most key the key things about school it's following directions, whether you're doing less or more. I didn't ask you to do that, so you you failed. <laughs> Bro, not even no, this is the last this one. This life. last yeah, one, like, last one. One time, I forget if this was high school, but they gave us this big old packet, and they said read all the directions before you finish it. 
and like it had a bunch of work in it and people's doing the work but if you got to the end of the packet it's like once you get to this part you realize you don't have to do any of the work you just had to read the packet and it'll tell and you like you don't have to do it, it. yeah what t- what jackass yeah, teacher i don't did know that? I, that's smart that's I like to that teach a lesson bro now you know when I say Buddy Hill, Buddy the- Hill to the 76ers. <laughs> Four Cock Corkmas, Doug McDermott, who got routed to the Pacers, two second round picks to the Pacers, cash considerations. Marcus Morris went to the Spurs, also got waived 2029 for a second round pick and cash considerations. Love it for the Sixers. Yeah, he actually I mean, played yesterday, too. Yeah, he, he played good. You had a dub. But I mean, they just add a shooter next to Joel. He's yeah. not just a shooter. He's, he's a one of the high best. premium shooter. He's one of the best yes. shooters of all time. Of That's a big difference. No, he is. But he's still in him in the mode of being a shooter. He's one of the best shooters of all time. But, yes, he's just a shooter. <laughs> a shooter in the – one of if the best I shooters tell, of If all I'm time. telling you, P, for my team, we picked up a shooter. Or if I'm, or would you rather have me say, we picked up one of the best shooters of all time yeah, on our hey, team? That's a different – that it's moves It's a difference. Okay. It's, shooters, it's a lot of me. shooters in the NBA for sure. Alec Burke shooting 40% from the three. He's a shooter. Okay. That's but what you're if I tell you I'm adding Alec Burke to so Buddy Hill, Buddy Hill is a different type of shooter. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're right. But you're right, yeah. Is I, this the trade that keeps him afloat? Is defensively, the there's more to be desired, but you got Joel on Absolutely. the team. So That's what it's all about, KB. I, I, there's no move they was going to make that was going to do anything for me. My, and I was going to always get back to what Unless is happening with Joel. I think Brogdon would have been a nice move. but I'm still Blaze. saying, when is when is Joel coming back? Brogdon ain't doing all of that. No, for sure. Yeah. It's the last year, buddy? Yes. And that's why it was only second round picks to get mm-hmm. him. So no, I think it's gonna be interesting to see how the offseason go. If he's a guy that stays or mm-hmm. if he just walks. I feel like he probably I, think, be your guess. I don't think they I don't think they make this deal without there being some sort of like verbal commitment. No, from I think him. they would. Yeah, because he's Buddy Hill. And they didn't give up shit. They're not they passing out. Yeah, I was gonna say because four con court Buddy Marcus Hill's Morris. probably gonna have people that wanna pay him. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's just he's like never, he's always gonna have a moment. What's your wanna, guess? I think he's gonna stay. Okay. Just for the ability to play with Joel. Your guess? I would say he's probably dipping. Your I think guess? they're going to prioritize think, other stuff. Mm-hmm. Probably dipping. I don't know. I think as Buddy Hill, why wouldn't I want to play with someone who demands a double because team? Because money, the other t- yeah, yeah, money. Uh, money. Yeah, money. money. And I like Philly has money, but it also comes down to like, do we want to spend this much money on Buddy Hill? Right. What um, do you think his value is? What are you paying? Like, what is Buddy Hill's value? Probably around like eighteen twenty. That's what he's getting paid currently. Yeah, he's I think. Currently. Well, he's probably gonna go up then. No, I, I don't think. I don't he's think you're tripping at that at all. I give him 22. Depends on what team I, I am. Because you know market. how the cap be going up, you they just be getting that money. That's true. So. How many years are you putting on that though? I'm only giving him like three years. I, like I said, my days as a GM of myself, four five year deals is for a guy Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, I'm not doing all. I'm of that. I'm not doing that for buddy. Unless either. I got a bid. Now, if I got a bid and I got to do what I got to do, cool. But um. I give Buddy Hill. I guess it really depends on what Buddy Hill wants. Because if the Bulls, it's just hypothetical. Hypo- the Bulls stop not going to be in there. The bull- oh, yeah. Stop throwing the Bulls in there. If the Bulls want them and they're willing to give them four years, then I probably have to give them four years to get them. So, That's true. But I could see a Laker trying to convince themselves to get Buddy Hill. For sure. <laughs> if y'all had the money. But, yeah, he, he fits the Lakers for what y'all need at least. You he can hide him does. defensively and he shoots threes. The 76 are one of those teams that didn't attempt many threes. Mm-hmm. Now they have, now they one have of, a, a guy that shoots shoot seven threes. a game. Him and Tyrese Maxey now next to you. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that in the playoffs. Hypothetically, Joel Embiid is back defensively to have Tyrese Maxey and Buddy Hield as your backcourt. But, again, I don't think you care about that in the moment of time. It's yeah. like, how do we get better? Can, can we stay in the top six? Yeah. Because right now that's in jeopardy. They're three games away from falling to the play-in. And they have not been playing great basketball. And I think that's and a real legitimate Tyrese Maxey didn't play. Yep. So. Cameron Payne came in and dropped 20 as well. Don't sleep. <laughs> I ain't see Pat Bev drop at twenty. <laughs> he dropped twenty. He dropped twenty gems in that locker room. <laughs> That's what he did. Is this even worth grading <laughs> for the Spurs or the Pacers? Second no, round picks and absolutely stuff. Absolutely not. No. Okay. Um, next trade is a three teamer. The Suns add Royce O'Neal and big body David Roddy. The uh, Grizzlies get a first round swap from the Suns, which is like the way the Suns did this deal is that this first round swap has been broken into like two to three different teams. So it's a, it's very <laughs> convoluted. <laughs> right, bro. Chemezi Metu doing my video reading all of these yeah, teams. It's too oh, much. Bro. It's too much. Chemezi Metu, Yuta Watanabe is back with the Grizzlies and the Nets get Kata Bates Diop, Jordan Goodwin, who's later waived, the draft rights to some guy, and then three future second round picks from Metu the Suns. Metu was waived and picked up by who? He got picked up. Oh, did he really? He got waived and got picked up. I'm going to Google it really quick. Maybe somebody like the Portland Trail. But did y'all see the DeAndre, De- DeAndre Aiden? Yes. Mm-hmm. What happened? 
Um, they basically said that. Oh, it was oh, the, um, the Grizzlies. I, I saw that hour. Uh, basically yeah, saying that he about. he his he whole tenure been. has been filled with tantrums and tardiness that it reminds them of Hassan, Hassan Whiteside, Whiteside when he was yeah. there, where he's giving you counter stats, but it's not impacting uh, real basketball, which fits. Yeah. I mean, the dude said, I can't come to work today because there's ice in my driveway. That but was did crazy. you see that, though? Like, they did sent, you see the they clips? They sent people from the team. I, yeah, I know, but still, but everybody no, else no. got there. DeAndre. Did they get up to him, though? No, I mean, no. I'm just saying in general, when you have 15 players and the one player that you question oh, if you love oh, basketball, saying, for sure. not making it. Yeah, that was little, funny. But they, they, I did see the clips, though, the, team, the, the cars could not. They had no traction, bro. <laughs> helicopter. True. It's a team. It's a billion-dollar company. Helicopter him. Or something. Well, I, it, it seems like there's no way he couldn't have made it. I don't know. That's it, how I feel as well. I, <laughs> I feel that, but when they sent the play, I'm I'm agreeing with y'all. But I'm yeah, usually he couldn't walk down the hill. And no, I, get to the I, agree. I, I, I agree. I agree. No I agree. Yeah. Get a slant. Uh, I agree. And usually, don't players show up like really early? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the we most found part. out he wasn't gonna be there 20 minutes before tip off. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was. I think I put that in chat like literally 10 minutes before. Like the game was literally tipping off. They're like, we don't know if I, if uh, DeAndre gonna make it today. The reason he didn't make it look like one of those 2K things where you. Mm-hmm. Where you see I like thought them it was saying fake someone's some out goofy. of the game. Yeah. yeah, it's some goofy, but this was like real life. This was real. I also seen the fans say this is a guy we're talking about who said what did it like Oh, he wanted to, to yeah. get his second contract. That second contract. And he and did, he and it. it was a max. So like uh, getting back to the trade, getting back to the trade. Um we see Royce O'Neal and David Roddy go to the Suns. That's all that kind of matters. The Suns just added a little bit of depth. Which is good yeah. for them. Um, the Royce O'Neal's now a guy that can really come in and play. That's a real player for them, yeah. yeah. For me, I like David Roddy too. They can use like one of them hustle players. He just when gotta, he does get minutes. He got to hit shots. That's the thing. Like thirty percent career three point shooter with a team like this, you kind of need to hit. Years ago, shots. I used to go on two K and I used to make rosters. Well, a roster, and it would be us, and it'd be all our homies. I never had certain guys that were comps for some of our homies. David Roddy gave me a comp. That is Byron. Terrence oh, Cribs. Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the C Cribs, man. Big body but short. You know what I'm saying? Stocky. Stocky. Yeah. I, I, I could see that. That's back when he used to be like, I'm J.J. Hickson. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> the effort he plays with, no, you're not. J.J. <laughs> off good times, maybe. Damn. Um, Suns, good grade. Do y'all want to put an actual grade on? It's like one of those deals. Like, Royce O'Neal's going to matter. Yeah. But what else? I think it would be yeah. minus. I, I thought no, they would have been in the Miles Bridges. I don't Bridges think I have any grades the rest I of I think they, they were in the Miles Bridges Swift States, but Miles Bridges said, yeah, I'm he good. He didn't approve. Yeah, I'm yeah. okay. I, and I didn't know that was a thing with like restricted free agents that they can deny trades. Here's a trade clause. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing yeah. with restricted free agents. That's actually pretty interesting. Yep. I like it. Mets acquire Dennis Schroeder from the Raptors with Thaddeus Young. And then Spencer Dinwiddie got traded to the Raptors, waved, and now is the L.A. Laker. Y'all got y'all guy. How do you feel, Lakers fan? He got a fit on because I said on Twitter he was dressed like Darvin <laughs> Ham. <laughs> he did Miles try to dress <laughs> today. Now was a decent fit Darvin had on. He was rapping. <laughs> <laughs> he was rapping. Don't disrespect Unk. That, that, Unk? That, is he going to be Unk after next year? It was such a got big that unk, event for him He to got have that Unk that feel that to him. Yes. He, he, he feels so underdressed compared to the other people yeah, that were there. He did. Uh, I feel good, though. But that is very like you. You had sweatpants at a live show. I did. And a you remember episodes ago, you had that Lakers ass starter jacket with that hat. Do you remember when... uh? We took the pictures when we were in Atlanta at Studio J. Mm-hmm. They photoshopped. We had suits on. They photoshopped me in some sweat pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel good about it. Um, I know we talked about, like, the make, or D Mills had uh, brought up a trade with D-Lo and Spencer Dinwiddie, but it feels a lot better not giving up D-Lo and just kind of adding him out the buyout market. That's, again, why we not professionals. He yeah. was going to give up a starter to get a guy. And D-Lo has been on with. fire, bro. <laughs> D-Lo been, D-Lo's been on fire. So, But we... Again, another team that struggles with the three-point ball on most nights. Adding somebody else who can also, and was, I don't even know what he's shooting from Terrible. three. Uh, let's say bad. He could be he could guess. be an X factor from three. I think in some cases, but I also like him coming off the bench too. I, in terms of uh, opposed to him being a starter for yeah, my team. With y'all team right now, there's such a drop off outside of the starting five. Maybe Spencer Dinwiddie could just add a little bit of a more of a oomph off the bench. If you offensively, what he's shooting from three? Yeah, thirty-four percent, thirty, twenty-eight, twenty, oh. thirty-two percent, thirty-two on six attempts. That's actually 
Yeah. That's actually kind of bad. He's always shot so many threes. He shot, he attempted five of threes per game, 32%. Five threes, 33%. Six threes, 30%. Why does he still got the green light to let off six threes a game? If he's that was 30%? my thing. I know he doesn't shoot very well, but he can get hot and he's willing to really take those, threes, especially deeper threes too. Mm -hmm. And I think like that just, you kind of need that sometimes. He's always you know? shot that low of a percentage it don't feel like it right no it doesn't yeah no. is it because he's such a good mid-range shooter that the threes that we don't notice how no, bad the threes are career 31 percent three-point shooter his best year shooting the three is back his first year in brooklyn back in 2016 2017 but he only attempted one game at that point yeah i think mm -hmm. he's, i think we're fooled by the fact that he's such a good mid-range jump shooter that like we don't notice that his three well i agree with mike too he also has a lot of performances where he gets hot yeah mm -hmm. that's he can have a yeah. game where he hits like five of them because i mean it, Elite, elite shooters are only going to shoot 40% on eight threes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and he, I, I think he goes to teams where he inherited a role where he has to shoot some off the dribble, too. Those yeah, are a I lot think harder. The Lakers know he's not shooting the best, but I think it's just like for right now, if we have D'Lo, obviously LeBron can take threes, but like D'Lo and Austin Reeves, those are the guys that's really like trying to hurt you from three. Add in another dude that could potentially give you four or five. I, I'll take that, especially with a, like coming as a reserve role. He's still a real NBA player, though. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. no disrespect, Skylar May's been playing real minutes for y'all recently. Like, <laughs> I know y'all just need yes. like real good yeah. bodies. Now y'all have a legit ball handle off the bench. Yeah, so, I like it. I like it for y'all. Um, does it make y'all into the upper echelon? No, maybe it can help us relief lock the playoffs. Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe. Wait, where y'all at right now? I forgot. Like nine. Y'all are the ninth seed. Yeah, yeah. Two games. I mean, maybe a game and a half above the Jazz. So, but we've been. Except for the game for the Nuggets, which respect to the Nuggets, they they just are really good. That last minute was like they they hit every shot every time. Like the Lakers are right there, they had them on the ropes. Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, like they're just gonna make that play. This like man, I don't know how we getting over this hump. It was tied with a minute and twenty seconds ago. Austin Reeves gambled on that pat. And yes, that, and yes. that was it. That was the end of the game because yeah. then the Nuggets just rattled off like three straight baskets in thirty seconds. And, it was and, and me, I looked at it as it's like that was. That was the chance right there for us to even do like get a chance to get back in the game. Right, they I'm had the ball. Just one of those guys you don't gamble on that steal. It was either we get the steal the and maybe we're back into it, or you it. leave MPJ wide open. They were probably going to score that possession. But they anywhere. did that multiple times in the game. <laughs> the giving up the three hurts, but I ain't gonna lie. They was on like we needed like to gamble on not gamble, but we needed to try something. They I gambled off did. MPJ like three different times in this game. Yeah, and he and burnt every us. time he had he burnt us. Spencer yeah. Dinwiddie best threes that come with zero zero dribbles. His highest. So catch and shoot three. Straight. Yeah, catch, catch and shoot. shoot. There you go. Thirty-five percent from three on catch and shoot threes. That's the other thing about Brooklyn. They didn't have anybody who can create for others. Yeah. So he had the ball nope. in his hands a lot and was shooting, you know, off the. Everybody was only in your world type of thing. There's not really like a. I felt like they're one of them teams that's like, I don't know if it's like part of their scheme, but they were quick to get up threes. Like first, uh, first, second opportunity threes they got. Jack them up. It doesn't matter if it's Dwayne Finney Smith. I think they should play like that. Because they don't I have they no, go, no straight like go-to guy. I and know Mikael has his moments and things, but he's mm -hmm. not a legitimate, you know. Yeah, I thought it kind of, yeah, it did work for them because it's like. Especially with Ben. Yeah, for a team that, like you said, don't really got that offensive star, it's hard to beat teams when they hit 15 threes in a game. I think they had one where uh, a game or two where they hit like 20 threes in a game. Mm. His second highest frequency <laughs> of shot. Um. Every time the it's Lakers seven sign one new player, it's yeah. Photoshop with Bron and AD like he's the third best yes. player. <laughs> why? Why did they make? Why did Br put this together? I, don't even, I think they do it because of their LeBron, interactions. Yeah. Yep. When you can post LeBron and AD, I guess you just had to take a chance. Spencer Dinwiddie shot profile: thirty-four point two percent of his shots come with zero dri dribbles. Then the next highest. 27% of his shots come with seven plus dribbles. No way. I think that seven dribbles? <laughs> Look right there. Seven? That's a lot. So, like, you see how they cut it up? Your that shot. is crazy. Just from how the Lakers play, which is more so like they're feeding the ball inside. That won't happen. Yeah. It's, it's like you're not even going to get that chance. He better not dribble seven times. At Imagine all dribbling with seven times with LeBron on the court. <laughs> yeah, big, 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 big. So he goes big, big, zero big. dribbles is his highest. His second highest is seven plus dribbles. And his third highest is three to six dribbles. And then his second to last and give last three to six is one Mostly to two when he's playing with Brown and AD, get the catch and shoot, but three to six dribbles, I think that's okay. So my scouting report let me know that when I clo I can close out on him, solid. He's not going one dribble shoot. He, that That's not the shot he's looking for. Mm -hmm. 
he's not a one dribble pull up looking like that's the lowest frequent shot is a one dribble pull up. Y'all got a great. I mean, we didn't even talk about the Nets or the Raptors. It was just one of those trades like it happened. Mm-hmm. I don't have any opinion yeah. about the trade. I mean, I think Dennis Schroeder is an upgrade for them at the point guard spot. Yeah, I guess the Dennis Raptors Schroeder just freed already, up some more money. Yes, and Dennis Schroeder was always he. It was reported that he was a little disgruntled because he wanted to go Emmanuel, to the Raptors. He made like, quickly. yeah, because Emmanuel he wanted to go there and lead a team. Mm-hmm. Once Emmanuel quickly got there, he didn't now went to the bench. He looks so. good in the jersey too. Yeah, so maybe maybe he'll saw some TikToks. Yeah, maybe now he could be the point guard for the Nets. All right, here are the next ones. Um, Daddy is young, wave the net as well. Yes. Buy a market. Y'all want that too? They probably going to be. Hey. F- okay. That's it. Or I, I saw an Nuggets. athletic article hey, KD, that said buy our market. Tristan 34 Thompson names. Do you think we won't pick up Daddy is young? Oh, that is young. Hey, I would like that on the Nuggets too. I think that would be nice. Oh. Replace Jeff Green. Jeff Green replacement yeah. without the three point shooter. Um, then not, yeah. Then I wouldn't replace Jeff. We, we mentioned this at the top of the show. Patrick Beverly getting traded to the Bucks for Cameron Payne in the second. Quick grades for this one. Uh, I give it a B minus. I, I would give it B a B plus for the Bucks, man. Yeah, I give they it a need some dog Bucks, in, that, yeah. in that locker room. Yeah, that's all it is. The 76ers is plan on trying to get Kyle Lowry on the buyout, and that's why they end up. I like this. that for them, too. Um, bring them home. These next ones, we quickly, because who the hell cares? Um, oh, I actually care about this one. Jaden Springer getting traded from the 76ers to the Celtics for a second rounder. I really like Jaden Springer. Yes, I do call too. me call me crazy. I like Jaden Springer. Yeah. So good job, Celtics. Second round pick for a player that could play in yeah, a couple yeah. years. Especially when they have like the games where a couple of people are they are out for the night or whatever. Mm-hmm. He could give them some defensive impact. Yeah, he, he has a lot of effort on the I like side. Xavier Tillman for them too. Uh, yeah. Yes. He can Bro. learn from Al Horford. Next he's one. he's gonna be really good for them. Blazers acquire Delano Banton. Come on, man. Talk to me about Delano Ben. Okay, next trade. Don't know, don't he don't even know who that is. I don't think Describe he does. He's on the Blazers. I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's yes. on the Raptors. Describe <laughs> him. Well, that's I, good. Mean, I think that's good enough to know that he He played went. for the Raptors. He yeah. Was, yeah, he used to be a little bucket for them. Okay. Did no, he describe him. I don't know how to describe him. You don't know how to how, describe Austin. Doesn't he have, he has like a little twist? From Young Money? No. Huh. What is his skin complexion? He's like my complexion. A little lighter, a little but lighter you didn't. Than he but got yeah, braids. Yeah. I don't know about the Twitter. Robin Lopez traded to the, the Kings and then waved and then was sitting court side. Did you see him yes, at the game? he was at the Reading Bucks that game. Book. Reading yeah. the book. And I'm yeah. like, what the hell are you doing? Go talk to him. No. Get no, him on just, your podcast. No, I mean, podcast. he was probably ready to hoop that day and then got waved. <laughs> he was already warming up yeah. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, this one we also talked about a little bit earlier, but let's get final grades. Kelly Olenek, Oche Abaja going to the Raptors in exchange for Otto Porter, Kira Lewis Jr. in a 2024 first-round pick. I mean, B for the Jazz. Yeah, they got a they, guy who was expiring, a guy who wasn't in their rotation and got a first-round pick. Danny ain't stock first him. round. He picks. knows how to do him. For the Raptors, uh, I like I'll them get a, a chance on Oche. C minus. Yeah, I like Kelly Olenek like opening up the floor. What do you like about him? Convin- like, I don't. I'm not trying to. He a big dunker. <clears throat> I think he has like with the jazz. What have you seen that you like? He has like. For, I think he he can hold his own on the defensive side. I think he's pretty good defensively. I like his energy levels. Okay, like I'm not looking at him as a star or starter or anything like that. But he can come off the bench and provide some good minutes for a team. I for think sure. he's a good complimentary piece. Would you rather have him or Grady Dick? Grady Dick. Okay. Would you rather have OJ Abaja or Grady Dick? Uh. Oche. Okay. We one and one. Long term? Give me the rookie. What, whichever. However you want to Give me the it. rookie. Because um, aren't they the guys that are going to compete against each other for minutes? More or less, yeah. Yeah. Um, Daniel House got traded to the Pistons. It got waived. Next one. Corey Joe got traded to the Pacers. Next one. Simone Fontecchio got traded to the Pistons. For I Kevin didn't know. Oh, I was just with the Corey got, Joseph one. Did you uh, – I only read the article about it, but Draymond was apparently he was like he knows his business, but he wasn't happy with the Corey Joe trade, the Corey Joseph trade, because like he said he's one of the most like professionalist NBA players in the league right now. Like mm. that's why like keep a job. Yeah, he's saying like man, he be working out like after the games. He's always ready. He's always this and that. It just kind of sucks to see him go. So I never knew that about Corey Joseph. You know, shout out to Corey Joe. Oh, you thought he's in the league this long because he's a just killer. Yeah, he's always been a solid player. What'd he say about Corey Joe? Get a ring and bring it home like I'm Corey Joe. Fontecchio's a piston. I like this deal for the Pistons. I like Fontecchio. Yeah, yeah. I just like saying the name sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> Fontecchio. But they traded for him so they can keep his bird rights in free agency because he's restricted. That's the idea behind it. 
Monte Morris got traded to the uh, Timberwolves for <clears throat> Trey Brown, Shake Milt, and a second. Shout out to the Timberwolves. Is that that same trade where we were talking about? And you were like, I got two seconds for you. And I was like, Oh no, he was like, you I wanted to give you Cal Anderson. So they, oh, they kept that was Cal a different Anderson, trade? Because yeah. I remember it was like two seconds. I was like, why am I giving you two seconds? Like, <laughs> one is just fine. <laughs> Either way, uh, they got a new backup point guard in mm-hmm. town where they needed some real good point guard play. Monte Morris hasn't been phenomenal this season, but he's an upgrade from He's going to hurt, and he played for the Pistons. Yep. Um, Xavier Tillman for Lamar Stevens in two seconds. I like Xavier Tillman as the 10th man in the rotation, yeah. especially considering the injury history of some of the bigs on the team. One of the better defensive added players in basketball. Big spot. Yeah, I like you gotta, it. And you're a team that got to go through Joel and Giannis. You need bodies. Yep. Pick and up on fouls from Xavier Tillman. And that's pretty much it. Oh, every single other trade here we've talked about because it happened earlier in the season. Terry Rozier getting traded. Now so let's talk so about so your Bulls and his <laughs> Lakers not making no moves. Yeah. The floor is y'all's. You know how we always say on the show, like we 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 are we are diehard fans of our team, but we leave it. At the basketball, if that makes sense. Yeah. Where it's like when the Bulls lose, I'm not like, damn, for the next two days. Yeah. Don't talk to me, honey. <laughs> this is the first time where I felt that. Damn. Where it, it bled outside of just me being like an NBA guy. Like I, mm. before we went to Milwaukee, I was really upset, bro. Like I was <laughs> really, really upset that nothing, nothing happening is insane. Yeah. And, and um, I put together a whole video, a whole rant video that – Got good numbers. Shout out to everybody that clicked that video because I clickbaited the hell out of you. Um, And at this point in time, it is what it is, you know. But I'm just, I was so mad in the moment because, again, the Bulls have made one trade since 2021. And and then the team above them, the 29th team, has done eight deals at this point. So there's a seven-deal gap between Between. what the Bulls have done and the 29th team. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Makes zero sense. And they talk about that they could compete what are you watching to think that you can compete? Because right now, hypothetically, mm-hmm. you win the play-in. You get the Celtics in the first round. Brother, there's no world where you beat the Celtics in a seven-game series. You can swap. What are we oh, doing? Yeah, is there a world where they get a win? Uh, probably not. <laughs> they would need like a 40-point performance from tomorrow. But, or something so, crazy. so what are we doing? And then it comes out afterwards that our Tunis Carney show was, was even given the green light to rebuild. Yes, I saw and that. And you decided, decided not, not to. to. And sometimes you'd be like, oh, ownership is like, boom, we got to keep this in together. The ownership is like, we don't give a damn no more. Yeah, Do they you? were prepared for it. And they, he said, nah, we'd rather keep DeMar and overpay him in the offseason so we can pay him until he's 37. We'd rather keep Drummond, who's playing out of his, his, his mind right now. Team is paying him money this offseason. He will not be a bull next year. No. Facts. Alice Caruso has an extra year on the end of his deal, but it's the same conversation we had about Bojan Bogdanovic. You're uh-huh. supposed to trade him. Two t- Teams offer two picks. The Warriors offer two picks to Moses Moody. I'm taking that deal. Because next year he has $9 million left on that deal. And he might not be a 40% three-point shooter next year. This is the one year that he had the most value of his NBA career, and the Bulls is like, you know what? Continuity continuity we're gonna win 38 games and y'all gonna like it and in order for you to keep caruso you're gonna have to overpay him he's as well. he's a 15 to 20 million dollar player in this current nba and he's yeah. a winner he wants to go somewhere yeah, he's, 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 he go to somewhere he's to a type of player he, he, the way he plays needs to be rewarded by winning not yes. by losing to the pro, the real problem is is that the bulls they don't want to rebuild so when, when, when the Warriors call and say, hey, we got first-round picks and a young guy, they're like, no, if we're going to trade our guys, we want people that can help us today, which is asinine. And mm-hmm. now with the ownership approving it, that means, you know, I thought for sure that they was probably holding off on it because they were number one in ticket sales and everything. But if the ownership's approving it, that means they okay with losing out on some bread. But they're, they won't. People are still going to go. We won 22 games the year I was a season ticket holder. Yeah. Go look at the attendance that year for the entire NBA. The Bulls were number two. They were 22 and 60. The Bulls are going to sell tickets. It's Chicago. Yeah. We love our mm-hmm. team. And especially because the tickets will be cheaper. Well, at least I would think so. <laughs> are they cheap right now? No. We're ass. And they are not cheap right now. Yeah, I guess because they say we still got DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> it's, it's just, I remember early in our podcast life, mm-hmm. me and you, both of our teams are just awfully ran. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, like, and I'm, I, mean, I literally mean that. I'm jealous of what Leon Rose has done with the Knicks over the last two and a half years. He's really I feel yes, you. yes. Because I think Leon Rose and Artunis Carney Shovas, Artunis Carney Shovas got like their year before, before Leon yep, Rose. He did. So, but practically the same amount of time. When Leon Rose took over the Knicks, they were bad. 
They had a young R.J. Barrett, some draft capital, and they've now one of the best teams of basketball. Right now they're tied for the fifth highest odds to win a championship. Mm-hmm. The Bulls in the same amount of time have made <laughs> one trade since Leon, since Leon Rose took over the Knicks. The Bulls have made one trade, and that was to get Julian Phillips for two second-round picks. Mm-hmm. I, well, like, it makes... And AK <sighs> came from uh, Denver, right? Yes. Yeah. He built the Nuggets. No, he didn't. That was Tim Connolly. He was in the room when Jokic got drafted. And now he's the executive of the team. He right, didn't do so, nothing. So the one thing I'll say about Leon Rose is I think being an agent, uh-huh. coming from that world, it help, has have, it has helped him identify talent. Hey, we got one of those too. Mark Eversley was was a Nike guy. He was an agent before that. That's what they picked him up for. Cause what the, the hell has Mark Eversley done? The Bulls cannot identify talent for shit. The the best thing about what the Bulls have going on is Kobe White. Thank you. And Kobe and White is not from not this from regime. Him. Guard packs drafted. Right. Everything that the team, has, these people have done, like, again, we had the one playoff berth, which was like four years in the making. Like, we didn't make the playoffs for four straight years before that. Cool. When you think about continuity in the NBA, continuity is for teams like the Warriors that have proven before that they can mm-hmm. win with the core. Yeah. The Lakers have won a championship with the LeBron James and Anthony Davis, so their continuity is cool. This Continuity on a team that won 36 games is stupid. Yeah. That's a, that's a difference I felt like. I wasn't I'm was as mad as KB is for the Bulls and I think it's cuz it said like they're in two different places like you y'all just need a different direction. Mm-hmm. So it's just like we wanted to trade because we're tired of DeMar like it's just not working here. For us it's like we're trying to get to that next step which yes. is a championship. Yeah. And I just don't think that was out there. No deal out there. They could have we could have got better a little bit, mm-hmm. but nobody there was nothing that we loved. That's and, why I'm okay with y'all standing back. Right. Because y'all again, probably would have had to involve that pick. Exactly. Yeah. And then, again, in this offseason, we know that the Lakers historically are going to be a buyer. Mm-hmm. We don't question Rob Palenka if he will make a deal because he's made 100 of them over the last five years. Right? And then y'all open up the op- – uh, only thing that I don't like about the Lakers is that LeBron is going to be 40 next year. You're yeah. kind of punched yeah. this season. You yeah. got to kind of consider that, man. He ain't necessarily the happiest either. Yeah. Um, did he, he put something in his Instagram story this morning? I don't know. I know when they asked him if, he, if he's going to opt into his contract, if he knows he, he ain't is, thought about it. And he said no. So, and he's also said he's also dreamed about playing with the Knicks. So LeBron, we have, it's LeBron we have no room for that man <laughs> to sign him. True. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Y'all have I'm, to gut your roster. You could do a sign and trade, take Julius and stuff like that, but we don't. And I don't think at this point, I don't think. Uh, I don't think everybody's. Uh, let me not. Speak. I remember Julius I and AD used to thing. get it done for the Pels. Yeah, Julius was his backup. Really small good. ball That's five, really good yeah. forty-three win team. Small ball five, but yeah, I just think the Bulls don't know, they they don't identify talent because then they'll even have talent on a team. Like it took it took it took like extremes for us to get this Kobe White. It took injuries, it took literally, literally yeah, extreme literally. injuries for oh. us to be able to let him get this opportunity. So um, they did find Io, and then they just Io do nice shit pick. weird. Like Lon- Lonzo don't be around a team and shit. I get he hurt, but damn, t- you talking about continuity one end, and then a dude is hurt and don't be around the team at all. He ain't on the bench for thirty nine games. Then I turn on a Laker game, and he there. <laughs> yeah, because all oh, y'all y'all in LA, it's like it's like when y'all went to Milwaukee with John. Oh, you you, you live in Milwaukee, John? Link up. <laughs> <laughs> you like that with your team? The in twenty twenty three, June of twenty twenty three, that is last season, last summer, almost a year ago, yeah. That is when the Bulls hired a shooting coach. <laughs> in 2023? In 2023. That was the first time ever? That was the first time the Bulls had had a shooting coach on the roster, on yeah. the staff. What they what we say when somebody get on to something? They late. <laughs> they late. Very late. And, and guess That's who's having career like, year shooter? Alex Caruso. A lot of motherfuckers. Alex Caruso, Kobe White, Ayo DeSumo. Imagine if you would have got a shooting coach a little bit earlier. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. They're like... If I was a diehard Bulls fan and I heard that, that's inexcusable, man. The shooting coach thing? Yes. Like, I, and it's not like this came out 2020. Like, this was a thing that's been for years. Like, there's been developmental coaches and all that. You didn't think shooting in 20, 2017 was important. Three-point shooting is a main form For a of team that – don't y'all, don't y'all struggle from three-point? Yes. Or not even – y'all don't even really take many don't three take I think them, that's no. more so y'all kryptonite. And when they do, they take hor- – Billy Donovan won't guys mm-hmm. to stand like this, and then last resort you throw it and you shoot a contested shot. That's mm-hmm. not a, that's not that's not that's not real. 
That's it's not just, real. The front office reliable. just lied. They said that they don't want to settle for mediocrity. They said they're going to be active, so on and so forth. Uh, again, and they want to sign them. Sign, wanting to sign DeMar DeRozan long term just doesn't make sense for an organization. It doesn't. Not uh, our organization, at least. It doesn't even make sense. And then, also, if you sign them long term, if you want to trade them, any team has to think about now, do I want to learn term DeMar DeRozan contract? This is the thing. DeMar DeRozan is so happy right now. Because they offered him some money this offseason, and it wasn't enough for him. Yeah. And he said, nah, I'm good. Now they have no choice but to give him more money. Or he's going to walk. Or he's going to walk, and they're going to have to overpay this man. And, and I, people think that I hate DeMar DeRozan. I'm just at the point with my franchise that we don't need a 34-year-old guy as our lead mm-hmm. guy. That's especially, it. He's especially, great. Yeah, especially when you see like down the stretch of games, like he's hindering Kobe the White. The development yeah. of, of Kobe White. So I yep. just... One, he's been great for the city for the past mm-hmm. three seasons and stuff. And shout out to Demar, but he's a guy that should be on a different team. Yeah, have um, have they came out like after the trade deadline? Obviously, they won. Like the fans wanted mm-hmm. some type of like answer or anything. Did they come out with like a quote or something? <laughs> yes, Mike, they did. Uh, Justice Winslow just got signed to the Toronto Raptors. We're smalls. We're <laughs> smalls. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they did. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me find the exact quotes because I did have a screenshot. So y- y'all <laughs> fill this air for thirty seconds. Yeah. I, I'm about to do the same thing for Darvin Ham. I'm not even saying that like that's the legitimate reason why they didn't make no trades or whatever, but it was just funny that after like they made no moves, he they said came out. Torian Prince, right? It was like, yeah, we uh, Darvin Ham was adamant about like not trading Torian Prince. We want to keep him, and I would think for most Laker fans, it's like, why why are we keeping him? <laughs> you know, this like, is the part that fans have to realize. Yeah. Darvin Ham in the front office, their argument is probably, what are we getting? Mm-hmm. Y'all want to trade a player so bad because y'all think he's bad. Right. What are you getting for a bad yeah. player? Mm-hmm. At that point, we might as well keep him because of the continuity. Then, then I understand continuity because it's like, we're going to bring in somebody at his level that y'all mm-hmm. are saying is bad, and we're just going to have him, and he's now a new vibe and a new person. And we might as well just keep our own guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here are the quotes. Our Tunis County service cites the emergence of Kobe White, Ayo DeSumo, and Patrick Williams' development and DeMar DeRose's closing status and Nikola Vucevic's double-double machine status and Alice Caruso making winning plays and Andre Drummond's play, plus the parity in the Easter Conference as the reason to have hope. We didn't see anything that would make us better. We would have had to take a step back, which we didn't want. We want to compete for the playoffs. We're a better team with Zach. He confirms everything that would have been reported. Ownership would sign off on a rebuild, but he wanted to choose this route. Carney Chauvis has made it clear that he doesn't want that, and he wants to stay competitive. There's your answer. No. He didn't. He is looking for moves that he think is going to take y'all here and go here. Yeah. The fans are saying here ain't enough. We've been here. Mm-hmm. Let's go here. So then, three years from now, we can we'll be, go here. Yeah. 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 No, I was gonna say like listen to that. It there was a lot of stuff that just didn't make sense to nah. me. They were talking about emergence of Kobe White, cool. Yeah, Andre uh, uh, Vucevic, double double machine, cool. Mm-hmm. What, all this, stuff, not all like, that stuff is not like Orlando. Of, regardless of what not you think, like yeah. all that stuff is just individual stuff that they could just do wherever. Facts. None of that stuff has worked for the Bulls in a way where it's, unless well, unless uh, since Lonzo was there, you You're know what right, I'm saying, Mike. like. Zach nothing. Levine had a 50-point game against the Pistons, and they lost. That, <laughs> hey, we're, that one piece going to get us to that fourth seed for us, or that third seed. Like, that's what makes it frustrating. It's just like y'all trying to consistently – I think you even said this literally verbatim. was like they be slapping in the face – they slap y'all in the face sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, with how they think like they could just say things to y'all, and y'all going to be like, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the way it should yeah. be. There's no consequence. There's no consequence to anything. Um Slap him in the face. The, the trio of DeMar DeRose, Nikola Vucevic, Kobe White have played a total of 1,000 minutes together. Mm-hmm. They have a net rating of a minus 3.19. Not very good because right yeah. now those are, those are your three best players because Zach Levine is obviously injured. The Thunder get they big with Biz McBiambo. Oh, Biz, he's hey, back in the league. Busy. I like it. Okay. Um, Kobe White has played a total of only 133 minutes without DeMar DeRose and Nikola Vucevic. Only 133. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. They have a net rating of plus 20. Plus 20? Without these old dudes? <laughs> and you don't look at that stat and be like, maybe we okay with just having, let's say we, uh, well, Vucevic had no market. I'm, I, I didn't even go into the deadline thinking Vucevic was going anywhere. He just signed an extension. He's not very good anymore. I was content with him being on the team. Yeah. But the DeMar DeRozan thing is real, man. The DeMar DeRozan thing is real. 
Kobe White and DeMar DeRozan, when they play together in the 1,400 minutes, minus 1.5 net rating. When Kobe White plays without DeMar DeRozan, almost 500 minutes is a net rating of a 6.5. That's really good. DeMar DeRozan on the court without Kobe White, minus 8. Like All that says, Kobe White should be running the show. He should be running the show. He should be there without DeMar. Because the numbers say, the small sample size of 500 minutes say, this team can be a plus 6.5 net Is that rating. what kind of happened with him in San Antonio, too? I forget the whole reason. Obviously, like, it wasn't the best situation for DeMar, but, like, they wanted to see, like, DeJounte Murray take that next step and everything. They kind of realized, like, him next to DeMar just can't kind of work. I think they were also – they were winning more in San Antonio, too. They were. They were. Yeah. DeMar is a – They had Lamar. He's, there too. he's – Derek White, DeJounte, yeah. DeMar, Lamar. A floor raiser, I think. Yes, 100%. He's a floor yeah. raiser. But – uh, not a ceiling raiser. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But he's also such a weird guy to try to fit into contending teams, too. Because, like, he demands the ball. He's he's not that effective off the ball. And, like, his best game, is a, statistically, it's a bad shot. Putting so a lot of teams, of us, like his ass. some teams probably don't want that shot, that contested, heavily contested mid-range jump shot. So I'm like, not a fan of it. It's, his not game a, not doesn't a, really fit the mold of a lot of contending teams. Sources. I'm not a fan of it when it's forced. Team's called. I would believe so. He had a market. I would believe It just so. wasn't the market, again, that the Carney Chauvis and Mark Eversley wanted. But there were teams that were offering stuff. I don't know who those teams were. I would take but, DeMar DeRozan for nothing. Yeah. I would give him away for nearly nothing. I would now what Can I, I get have, two second-round picks? That, that would, oh, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would do that. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. Because at least we have a direction. If I mm-hmm. were the Philadelphia 76ers and Joel Embiid was healthy— and we I got would, Buddy yeah, healed. Yeah. I would have got Demar Derozan for two seconds, even if they wasn't healthy. If you can bring them both, Demar DeRozan. We talk about floor raising and keeping a playoff spot. Demar Derozan go to Philly right now, and they're keeping their playoff spot. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't lying. That's yeah. a that's a real NBA player. Give me give me Demar Derozan and Andre Drummond for two seconds, and Nicholas Batum. Andre Drummond has more value, but De- Demar Derozan. <laughs> that's why I try to sneak him in. <laughs> <laughs> So closing out games with Tyrese Maxey, is DeMar DeRozan still getting the ball? Same as with Kobe White. Yeah, DeMar DeRozan get the ball. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Ain't that the saying? Yep. It's his ball in the game. Sorry, Tyrese. <laughs> Imagine telling Tyrese Maxey, <laughs> you no longer get the ball to close out games. Uh, I, I mean, it I, ain't I, that honestly, direct. And it, You know what? Yeah. It's not a personality not thing for direct. DeMar. Ty- Tyrese Maxey is also better than Kobe White. DeMar DeRozan, true. true. <laughs> DeMar DeRozan <laughs> has said before that he wants Kobe to take the shots. But I guess coach does it. Uh, like, I don't think it's a per- – DeMar's not going to that huddle with two seconds left, like, my time to shine. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think that's what Billy's drawing up. Uh, yeah. And he's I mean, as a, as a coach in this year, I mean, whatever would happen with this year, but as a person that's, like, known that, like, this dude can knock down that shot. This dude, for most people that can test in mid-range or whatever, that's like a 20, 15%. That's a 30, 40% shot for yeah. DeMar. So it might be our best option, but – He's the best – I just best don't like it when y'all It's have, all about that. Because even – I don't really want to take nothing away from Billy Donovan, um, but if AK is saying he's trying to go forward, they trying to compete, then Billy Donovan has to coach in that way. Uh, Kobe, This would be new for Kobe White. This would be like giving him the ball and making, letting him do shit. This would be all – you know what I'm saying? This would be like a new experience. You, that is kind of like development. Yeah. But their team is trying to win, so you're not going to let him develop in real time. Hey, we the game is on the line. Let me go to Kobe White for the first times in his career. <laughs> no, we're going to give it to Demar, who has shown us he can make these shots. He's a quote unquote closer. The, the it just seems like the Bulls are off yeah. page with the rest of the world in basketball. Just, yes. For the for like the the games that I've seen them, like they were in those tight games, which Bulls are usually in pretty tight games to kind of yeah. close it out. They were. It's just I think Steve uh, Stacy King said it like you. Just because Kobe White has the ball in those last couple seconds don't mean he got to shoot the ball. But it seems like he's just a better decision maker in taking the shot versus DeMar knowing if he gets that ball, who's taking that shot, KB? It's DeMar. DeMar DeRozan, is, he's not passing unless you're quadruple team. One of my favorite things, and this is probably the be- worst thing too, they beat the Timberwolves, came back down 20-plus points. Mm-hmm. It's a bad because I think that was the moment. They false like, hope. We, we gave them false hope. We just beat the number that. one team. But after the game, Kendall Gill on the post game was like, this is the game that Kobe White took it over as his team. And in my mind, it's like, that makes so much sense because we're going to go into the deadline. We're going to make the trade to get rid of some of the veterans that might be taking the last shot. And it will be Kobe's team. This team, 
will never be Kobe White's team as long as DeMar DeRozan or Zach Levine is there. Yeah. You can't tell these dudes have made all, an All-NBA appearance or multiple All-Stars that the young kid, the 23-year-old, it's his team now. And, and it's not going to be the connection there. To piggyback off of that, based off what I've seen and what I think in my mind, off my opinion, because I don't know him personally, seems like Patrick Williams is the same way. He's not, he, he's not going to step on toes. So in order for him to take the leap that we all want, just from just an aggressive mm -hmm. standpoint, those dudes would have to clearly be out of the way. Yeah. But as long as they're on the team, he's the guy that's going to defer naturally and yes. say, hey, I'll just be here. And yeah. I, I, I want to quickly find the stats because I saw it on Twitter. A f this Oh, this might have been the beginning of this season. So th the stats would have been old at this point about the amount of points that Patrick William averages and the percentages went out DeMar or Zach um, playing because there was a little stretch where DeMar missed some games and Zach missed some games at the same time. And it was like, all right, Pat, what you got? And he had like a couple really, really good games. And I think that goes into it. One of the when Patrick Williams got drafted, he said, "I'll do whatever it takes for the team." It's like I I love that answer. Yeah. But it's never going to get him to the point where he's like, "This is me. I need to do this." I got Demar Derozan and Zach Levine on the team. They need me to catch a shoot. That's what I'm going to do. And which now may come into a thing now where we might see again where Patrick Williams goes to a new team and we see a different version of Patrick Williams yep. and we like. That's what scares me, Derek, because when they say that they want to stay competitive. That tells me that there might be an avenue where they're like a guy like Pat, who's going to be valuable across the association to some extent. Teams yeah. are going to want him. Especially yeah. since he was a number four pick. Right. Obviously. That they're like, ah, oh, maybe we're willing to give up on him to bring in this 30-year-old veteran to help us be three games better for next season. Uh, Patrick Williams has been injured, obviously, for a significant amount of yeah. time at this point. He's up for a contract extension. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like. That's enough Bulls talk for somebody that didn't do anything. The other team that didn't do anything was the Atlanta Hawks, um, had to Shante Murray. Um, and, and what I said earlier in the show is true. I don't mind it as much for them. Again, they've been playing better basketball as of late. And if the trade wasn't there to get rid of the guy, then hold on into the offseason where the offers will probably be better. Yeah, and we saw the, the report earlier that the deal with them and the Lakers was pretty much done. They had to find someone to take D'Lo. Maybe that's what fell through. The it Pelicans kinda, one was interesting. It was kind of hard for them to find someone mm -hmm. to take D'Lo. I like where their mind was at. They wanted Herb Jones. Yeah, they did. I like where their mind was at. I, I, I like that a lot. That would I was surprised to see the Pelicans dangling Herb Jones, but they did it. That's no, what they, that's they, they said no. Yeah, that's yeah, why. But then again, I was I was thinking about this. Like, what the hell else could they have? They said they weren't giving up CJ. They weren't giving up Brandon. They weren't giving up Zion. This is a twenty what seven million dollar contract. You need to give up somebody yeah. that. And I would think that they wouldn't going to give up Trey Murphy because the Hawks yeah. would have probably jumped on that. Yeah. So. They thought they was finna say Alvarado, Daniels, and Hawkins. <laughs> there you go. And maybe they just like, oh, the market is set and he's not as valuable, so let me try to peek my head in the door. Um, but I, I when, for the moment when that was a thing, I was so excited to see that trade potentially me happen. Too. I'm like, that would be kind of a cool fit. Me too. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't really dislike it as much for the Pelicans. I like Herb Jones, but I'm, you know, they, they, they got to start shifting. They got to start. They and can't I think just Dejounte would have gave them a different, different vibe, a different look. Because then you put that. CJ in his natural. At the two spot, DeJounte next to him. Maybe that'll unlock his defensive talents again. Maybe he'll get back locked in on that side of the ball. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I love, ex I, I'm excited to see DeJounte on a new team this offseason, though. I think it's going to happen this offseason. I'm so excited to see him on a new team. I saw some people campaigning for the other guy. Trey Young. Trey Young. I don't want to hear shit about no rumors until it's back. <laughs> we got... Months now of nothing yeah. that can You happen. know they already got the photo shots of him. Hell yeah. In, in, the in a Laker jersey. Yes. Donovan yes. Mitchell. We're the Lakers, the Lakers what NBA there. do the Lakers watch? <laughs> <laughs> These guys ain't going to L.A. It was, it was one Donovan game Mitchell, Trey Young, 17. and then someone else was also in there. It was like... How y'all getting these guys? I also think it's enduring, though. It's kind of funny to just see the Lakers are tied to everybody. Yes, at some that's point. the That's what part. makes it funny, yeah. Yeah. Rob Lincoln and them just be over there just... They be on fans ball. <laughs> <laughs> when the contracts do match, let's give them a call. <laughs> oh, fans spoke going crazy. Um, Kobe Bryant had his first of three statues unveiled the other night. Yes, he did. Um, it was the moment we put up the one finger during the 81 point game. Um, got his number eight, but they got two other statues coming soon. The next one is going to be him and Gigi together, and then there's going to be one where he run, he's wearing a number 24. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of conversation about it. it. In my opinion, it's hard to get a statue and a buff to actually look like a player 
I think the likeness of Kobe was there. Obviously, yeah. the yeah. face is not as good as you would want. Mm -hmm. But if you look at that, you could tell it's Kobe being Bro, the, the, the Nike Zoom ones, yeah, the Kobe ones on, bro, it looks so good. Like, I, I thought I, it was I cool. enjoyed it. Like, I literally thought There's like, a QR hey. code at the bottom that you can scan it and you get the highlights from the 81-point game. I thought that right, was cool, too. I got that shoe. <laughs> it's a good shoe. I got that shoe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't. Miss, I'm a man. I think it. it it's. It look, it, I think it looks like Kobe. Yeah. Most of the conversation say, they missing the whole purpose of the statue because man. the conversation comes from a place where that is. That's where it's at. The internet nitpicks and tries to find negatives in mm -hmm. everything. If you're going to the internet and expecting positivity, you might as well put your leg behind your head and go do a 5K run. Especially now, hard it's because hard, you know? Elon got the for you page, and it's nothing f stuff that I enjoy. No, <laughs> I'm just I'm seeing I'm seeing people get hit by cars all of a sudden. I, you know how many accounts I have blocked because yeah. it just doesn't fit the stuff that I want to see. I don't feel safe opening in public places. I was at EJ game, and I'm on my phone like this. I'm at the dentist. Open up Twitter because I'm 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 five minutes early to my dentist appointment. Open up t t uh, Twitter. Not somebody retweeted nothing. My for you, and mind you, I have never liked the picture. I have, I don't follow any people. I it can is guess. Mia Khalifa. Yeah. <laughs> With no, no, like you know how some not safe for work tweets have yeah, like yeah. the protection. No protection on the tweet. That's She's what, just out there, and I'm in the dentist. That's what Twitter is like. Yeah. Unfortunately, becoming, bro. I don't even like opening that app no more. Yeah, the for you page is. Cause that's what the it's that's kind of like what your page public. used to yeah. be. Your timeline used to be things that you like yeah. and people that you follow. But it's like y'all gonna force this upon me. Yeah, y'all yeah. yeah. gonna just force thing, this on me. Well, she the got worst blocked. thing is, just in general, not just Twitter. I like, but looking that's at not comments. even gonna be enough. If somebody else is gonna, yeah, pop you can't, I, mean, I can't block a million. Yeah. This is a, a you market. know what I think it is though, and it might be partially my fault because when that happens, I click onto the account to block the account, so they see me click onto As the account, view. and it might be like, oh yeah, he likes this because yeah. technically you viewed it, but also scrolling, it's like a view. A view, so stupid. So it's kind of setting us up because yeah, so I've stupid. clicked on things, mm -hmm. but I'm not my, liking. My thing but is because I, on it I is enjoy enough. going through the comments. Like I just like to see what people's reactions is. They be funny, and I'm reacting. I gotta scroll through like six, po six like comments. I don't like that trying that to no like ads or like OnlyFans. Or I don't like, like that I no don't more. Either. Exactly because yeah. the comments now you gotta weed through it. Comments yeah. will have the most random thing. You can be looking yeah, at the a comment com section. Don't have to do nothing with the post. With the now. post now, yeah, it'll be like you said. Somebody linked to their OnlyFans. It'll be like KB said. I sometimes I see disgusting thing like man, it just, somebody just got bit by a shark. Yeah. And it's just a video just right there. Yep. <laughs> and then you looking at a thread of like a rap beef. Yeah, Ice yeah. Spice and somebody is rap beefing. And you like, oh, they said something funny. Let me look at all the other the funny comments. Days and a Twitter. shark is biting this <laughs> person arm? What does that got to do with anything? <laughs> well, all we did was subtweet on Twitter with your friends. That was, that those was, the, that was the best days. <laughs> That's I have before, so many stupid That's when a tweets. lot of people were still on Facebook. Yeah. That's why I feel like if anybody, like, because I know they used to try to get tweets from, not even just, like, people just want to be extra and try to get, like, old tweets or whatever because I think it's funny. All them old tweets had to be, like, we were just, uh, we were talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And we would never add each that other or nothing like that. That so annoys like, me. Why? Because what are you doing? Why are you looking at my old tweets? <laughs> I don't even have anything to hide. Like, somebody pulled up an old tweet and I was talking about, I'm going to get some curries. And it was just like, why? What made you just go and type my name <laughs> with Curry? It's fun looking at our old stuff <laughs> because we know each other. Yeah. But if you don't know me, why are you just randomly looking at my? I've stuff? never went to someone's account ever. Like, Let me go through his old ever. Tweets. I don't yeah, give bro. a damn if it's LeBron. I don't care who it is. I've never you pull up a, KD's old tweets all the time recently. <laughs> They've been knowing that. Well, that's because those are already those are already like known. They're like, like I'll drink the yeah, bottle. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. The bath water of just Scarlet Johan. Yeah, it's like those are known. But like to randomly search my name and Curry. Yeah, he just, they were just waiting to see if you slandered him at one point. It's of like, his what career. are you doing? <laughs> I'm on you. See, you hate Steph Curry because in 2016 you said that they blew a three-one lead, and that's not fair because they didn't blow a three. No, it's not. If it's I'm not the that tweet important. from 2011 or something, it's just crazy. That yeah. means you really did some digging. That's what people be doing. People, yeah. and then people do it to celebrities all the time, trying to find ways to cancel. I don't believe in stuff like that. If you gotta, if you have to go, let let uh somebody get like some traction off TikTok or something like that. Best believe people go through them receipts to see if they can get some dirt on you. Yeah. Is this person safe or not? Let me go look and see if they've ever tweeted the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> legit, though. Legit. <laughs> yeah. And you will see people also have, like, they'll Photoshop it just because they want to get some likes with a bit of, I got them, guys. The, that's the most dangerous. That's, that's the worst so thing, dangerous. bro. That's so, literally that's so that dangerous. The, the new AI stuff is crazy. All yeah. of that stuff so is dangerous. so dangerous. Um, 
Last thing about the Kobe statue, the my favorite part of the entire thing was Vanessa saying that if y'all don't like the pose, because people tough are like, shit. Yeah, yeah, if y'all don't like the pose, tough shit, this is the one Kobe picked She himself. already knew. Smart woman. Yeah. You already know that Twitter and the me- and social media is waiting to make something negative. Yep. Yep. And it's the one Kobe wanted, and he got it. And I thought it looked amazing. So I did too. Rest in peace to the Mamba. Rest, rest in peace to the Mamba. Um, Greatest like I ever. I got that. Um, so they got a Kobe statue, a Shaq statue. A what are the statues? Kareem they? statue. Magic they have Johnson. Kareem? They have Magic. Them already? They have a ton of statues. I don't remember seeing them when I was there. Um, I think there are 11. Well, we, went, we went right in because mm-hmm. we had yeah, that show. Yeah, we did. Um, I think there are 11, 13 NBA players now have a statue. Can y'all name them all? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Shaquille Dirt. O'Neal. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal. George Mike and got wait, wait, down can, the we, can, we, can we slow it down? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> At arenas, NBA. <laughs> George oh, Mike got George Mike does got one down the street. We got though. three. So you get yeah, you I got said Dirk. You said Dirk four. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, who's a lot of them are Lakers. Keep guessing, Laker legends. Yeah, we just named Kareem. 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 Yep. Okay. Um, Jerry West. Jerry West. Yep. Oh, Magic yeah. Johnson. You already got Magic. Um, At least one more Laker legend. Old old Laker legend. Elgin Baylor. Elgin oh, Baylor. There you go. Um, so that's all of the Lakers. Y'all said Mike, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. So y'all, how many you got? Seven? Mm-hmm. There's a couple more. I was going to say all, uh, obviously they're Hall of Famers. <laughs> Nobody's going to statue for the random role player. Uh, uh, Julius Irving? Oh, Julius Irving. Let me see if he's on the list. Julius Irving is not on the list. Mm. Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins is. I was. Does I took a picture from him. Larry Bird in Boston? It. Larry Bird does not have one. It's going to be some somebody old, old that I'm thinking. Um, Does Bob Pettit have one? That no. Okay. Wait, did we say Shaq? Yeah, we yeah, did. Oh, we did. Okay. All okay. the Lakers are done. Okay. Um, who else? East and West. Give us East and West. Have a random? No. Um, Miami. That's you said a, George Mike, didn't you? That team is relatively. Yeah, you said as a yeah. joke. Yeah, I George, was joking. George Mike counts. George Mike not in Staples Center. It's in Minneapolis where the Lakers uh, originated. Oh. Um, but he has one. Okay. Y'all have one Eastern Conference all-time center. All time center. His statue is actually great. I've never seen this. It's it's pretty damn good. All time center, two time champion, four time MVP, thirteen time All Star, ten time All NBA, records, records. Will Will Chamberlain. Oh shit. Okay, that I was Ooh. I was digging so uh, hard, bro. Oh okay. We never been to a so seventy four. You went. You went. And then the last two. Are Western Conference City that we've all been to together? These two people go in tandem. So San Francisco, uh, John San Stockton Francisco? and Carl Malone. John Stockton oh, and Carl Malone. Utah. Those yeah. are all of the NBA statues at this moment of time. Um, I, like there are statues of Bill Russell that's not in the arena, oh, but okay. it's Boston City Hall Plaza. Players um, who should get one. Larry Bird has one in Indiana State, but like we're talking. NBA. Why he got one in Indiana State? I don't know. <laughs> Yes, and he went there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, and he went there. Yeah. Um, who should get one? Should, should Derrick Rose get one? LeBron for Cleveland, obviously. Yeah, LeBron, LeBron Cleveland. Cleveland. LeBron um, Miami? LeBron at all three places. Probably not Lakers. What did I get you, Donis has them one? Why not? I think Dwayne Wade might get one for Miami. 100%. He should, um, I hope so. Yeah. Bro, speaking of just Luka, like top seen? players, who for the Bulls. Who's the second best <laughs> Cavalier of all time? Mark Mark Price. The reason I asked that because I was scrolling through Twitter and somebody's like, "Is Donovan Mitchell already the second best Cav of all time?" That's crazy. <laughs> and, and I was thinking hell. about it. No, and no, obviously, no, people brought no. up like Kyrie. No. You can bring Resume up Mark Price. Who I mean, I ain't really watched. Mark back Price, in the Craig uh, Elo, Brad Doherty. Yeah, uh, they got some. But as Larry far as Nance. talent goes, Donovan Mitchell's probably there. Yeah, yeah. talent with him wise. and Kyrie. Him and Kyrie. Craig Elo, Mark Price, they went on runs in the playoffs. Yeah, though. the resume have to mm-hmm. have to match it. Joel's Joel's gonna, oh, I never Gauss put my earrings there. back in. Wow, Joel's gonna get a statue. Oh yeah, Tim Philly. Duncan should get one too. Oh yeah, Tim. Yep. Oh, Tim yeah, Duncan yeah. should for get sure. one. Hakeem Elijah. Matter of fact, just put 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 the big three up there. Yeah, I was about to say. Have a big three. Whole big three. Do they still rock with Tony Parker? Oh, he did lead. Do they it? still rock with him? After what he did. But nobody remembers also. when he went to the Hornets. No, okay, uh, yeah. It was still the Hornets, right, when he went? Yeah. Okay. Him, him, him and Nicholas Batum, that French connection. No. Nobody I remembers Tony Parker when he I don't know if they rock with him, there. though. But I don't, I don't know if they rock with him. <laughs> I think they would. 
According okay. to this article, I Kyrie Irving Manu, is the second I think best. Manu probably for sure will get one. Greg Popovich might as well get a statue yeah, outside yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I got that new Vision Pro. Yeah. From How's Apple. It been? It's been kind of crazy. I've been seeing. You like, just walked in and got one. Uh, no, I paid. I paid. Oh yeah. Resale. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, risky. And luckily, it wasn't risky. <laughs> it was his, uh, his germs had, one on it, right? It was it no, it was all boxed up, still in okay. the box. Even okay. it was still sealed. I had to open up the okay. delivery. How box. much was it? I paid thirty seven. It usually okay. is thirty five. So two hundred bucks. He didn't. He didn't actually make any money though, because he paid like two hundred bucks in taxes. He said his brother ordered it, uh-huh. and Apple wouldn't give him a refund, so he just wanted to get the money back for his mm-hmm. brother. He didn't even oh. want to up price. Okay, I'm like, I say less. I take Look at it. You. That's a nice little come. It's up. a good come up because the other ones they had on there were like forty five hundred, so oh, I came in at the yeah. right time. But it's just weird, man. I I, I didn't think Do you know I was, they had that like type of thing in Futurama, right? No, where it's just like it's called the iPhone, but they put something in like. Your eye, and it's like you literally just see your phone. So that's basically, basically, basically what you got. What I want to hear yeah. more about this. It's basically what it is. What Mike is saying is true. With like any app that you could put on your phone or on your Mac MacBook, you can do it with your just your eyes in one hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I was actually gonna bring it today to show y'all, but I forgot. Uh. Or like it's it's synced up to your iCloud, obviously. So when y'all hit the group chat, I hear a ding, and I look up, and I can click. That's dope. To t- go to the messages, and all of the text messages I've sent to y'all over the last two three days have been me typing it. With my eyes and fingers. So is it like an actual? So it's like can a anybody virtual, else see it? No, it's a virtual keyboard. Like you just type yeah, it like but this. But it's like this. Oh, it's like this. Yeah. Which so you on Twitter? Kind of goofy. You on it Twitter? Kind of you on Twitter? Like yeah, I can really look at that. <laughs> <when I'm looking>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's still like you can see all your surroundings though. So Everything, say like you yeah. walked outside, like you. It's still not see fully it. immersive. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it can be. You can. It's a setting where you could turn it. Really? I, I'm not doing. Only time I've I, done that is when I was watching a movie. I had. A, I feel like you got to do that like while you laying down or something. Yes, I. I Right hand of God fell asleep, took a nap accidentally. With, with them on? With it on. I saw somebody sitting <laughs> in course that with them. I know what happened. Not the the he, wanted, he wanted to go viral. Yeah, yeah I saw but it that. was like, why would I sit course that with these on? To go viral. You know why? Yeah. Why it's not a good idea is because it's not, nothing's going to match what your eyes actually see. Yeah. So, like, that's a fact. When you have it on, like, obviously with my glasses and everything, I see you perfectly. With the thing on, your your resolution goes down just a little bit. You're a little, he's a little pixelated. He's a little pixelated, okay. and that's why. Why the hell would you play? You don't want to watch a basketball game like that. <laughs> yeah. Um. But it, it's been super fun because I have I edited my videos yesterday on it. Really. I was in the living room editing a video that I would normally have to edit in my office. What you can do is that you can connect your MacBook, which I edit on my Mac, um, my iMac to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the only thing I needed was my was mouse. mouse. Oh, that's and, I'm, and I'm in the living room with just my mouse on the couch like this. At the so video. it's basically like you were looking at the screen just through the goggles. Yep. that's kind of cool. And man. I had that, and then I had another tab. Have over you tried here. any games on it? Yes, it's not like many what? though. That's the point. It's because people think it's like a VR headset, like the Meta Quest, to have all of these games. It's not that. They don't have that yet. It's more of like a. I, I it's think like a resource, it, or like, like a, a resource, yeah, a production like, thing, yeah. or just like a, an, a, an addition to your phone. Mm-hmm. Like I don't need my phone anymore if I have that on because everything I could do on my phone, I could just do right there. And there. That's cool. Um, but I was editing my video and I also had um, Apple Music on too. And it's, I didn't need headphones. Like Suzanne was sitting right next to me. She didn't know I was listening to music or anything. Oh, it's like a piece That's in your so ear crazy, too. No, bro. I just think about no, like how are you listening to music then. You can hear it. It's, it's there's speakers, but they don't <laughs> bleed enough for the people next to you to hear. Only time I would wear if if I was in a air like a airplane, okay. Because I guess there's a slight amount of blend, blend mm. or bleeding, but for the most part nobody would I was know. Gonna say, it's funny to think clear. about, bro. For me, absolutely. It sounds good, but it's absolutely. like, like your surrounding people can't it, hear. I have a surround sound. We, I watch um, free in free in. It's a it's an anime that I watch in best of the years. If you ask me, um, I went to rewatch a fight scene from early in the season. Like, right. Let me see what this is about. Because when you pull up the screen, you can adjust how big the screen is, how small That's the screen cool. is. So I, I made it big. I went fully immersive. I was on the moon watching my favorite anime. In the fight scene, there was stuff going on in front of her and behind her. You could hear I it? I could hear it behind that, me. Yeah, I love that type of stuff. It makes no sense, bro. Oh, oh wow. yeah, that's that surround shit, yeah. But also, what I will say, it's not worth $3,500 right, right now. Yeah. See, my thing is, I think it's funny when technology, especially when it first came out, is expensive. But, like, after a, a while... There's going to be other companies that just try to bite it or like yep. it's going to like there's going to find a market and it's going to get cheaper and it's going to be more like everybody's going to have it. Mm-hmm. How like does it get to the point where it's just like, man, I just got home. I'm just putting on my goggles so I can do everything for my right. like. I'm going to go home and put on your goggles. I'm going to go home to edit my videos I shot yesterday on my goggles. Because the, the reason I like it is because it's not the same as mm-hmm. being there fully attentive. Mm-hmm. But I'm in the living room with my family. 
editing my video and I'm actively there. And I can still like Avery's doing something crazy. I can pause my, my editing and just sit there with her and color or do something mm. with, the he- with the headset on. It's, it's like dystopian in a way because I yeah. have this big ass headset on. That's what I say. It's probably, kid. yeah, it probably <laughs> look weird. This like, yeah. you got them big ass guy, um, uh, the headset on. But my favorite thing is like finding something new and like telling like, Suzanne, try this. So like the, f- the thing we just found out about, if you go to Disney Plus um, and you click on an Avenger movie, you mm. can watch the Avengers movie on top of Stark Tower. So like I can see Iron Man's suit in the room with me. I can see the tower and all the lights of the night sky and all of the other immersive stuff. They have one for Monsters Inc. where I can watch a movie while in the factory, the scare factory. Really? Um, okay. You can watch a movie um, in I don't know Star Wars, but something Star Wars related. And uh, one more, I think it's Harry Potter. Potter? Huh? You watch it on the Death Star. I don't know. I don't they know say you put it Harry on, Potter. you just hear I mean, Darth Vader breathing in your ear. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Oh my god. Uh-huh. But no, it's been it's been pretty cool. Where like my I think I sent y'all that video. I was doing a workout. I was on the like on the bike and I had music playing and I was looking at NBA stats. And I, I didn't actually write notes. I just did that for the video. But I'm like looking at cleaning the glass while doing my 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 workout and listening to music. Like it's been super cool. And it's been making me want to work out more because now I can be do stuff while working out. You See, don't even think about it. I was there for 45 minutes, didn't even think about it. You said I just got. I feel like I gotta like one time when I'm at your house. I just gotta put it on. I want to see because you said I'll it's not. It it's not fully immersive. So I just wonder like how much. Like you said, you're on the bike. Obviously, you see everything. Do you just see like the pixelated bike in the background? Yeah, but it's when I when you say pixelated, it's not that bad. I'm not saying. I'm just saying, but like, but you see your background. Yeah. You're still like I could do all this type of stuff while, all on the screen. Too? I could be productive. I can wash dishes. I can cut. I can literally cut a tomato. Okay. And feel safe. That's my it. thing. Is like, what does the peripheral look oh, like? Oh, the peripheral is awful. It is. <laughs> if if it's not so, like it's like this, right? Yeah. To see fully you, I would have to turn my head. Okay. But normally, I could like right now, I can see you. It could I can completely sure. see you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would have to turn okay. my head, which matters to some extent. If you're in a I real mean, world, if I'm in the house, active. If but I'm in, in the house, house it yeah, it don't matter. Yeah. Especially on a plane, that sounds. Yeah, I cannot wait till we travel again with it, because I'm gonna put on a movie, I'm gonna put on some headphones, and I'm gonna turn myself fully immersed, and I'm gonna act like I'm not on the Bro, airplane. Being fully immersed on a plane sounds decent or scary. Turbulence hit, and I'm fully immersed. I might fucking jump out the seat a little bit. Might mm-hmm. make the movie a little more interesting. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or you better hope it's nothing like going crazy, like some type of like uh, apocalypse Ooh. scene where it's Ooh. like shaking and everything like, going on. Yeah. I would love to watch like Jurassic World, fully mm-hmm. immersed. Yeah, they, there's a there's an app that's called Discover Dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, I think you would like that. Because the dinosaurs like, are in 3D. And nah, you can, like, imagine you play Pokemon Go on that. Hey, bro. Oh, wow. And you, seen, you walked oh. outside and seen, like, Pikachu just sitting I can't there. wait till people start developing real apps for play it. Play Madden on oh. it. Play Madden, bro. The, the Meta Quest I think 3, they have something like that, the don't Meta they? Meta Quest 3 has a Madden that you can play. You literally I, be dropping back step. Like, you're throwing the ball. So bro. you have I've to seen f- actually before. move? Yes. So yeah. if I'm the wide right receiver, I have you, to actually oh, you, run around? You want to get play quarterback. You That's... That's but you got to have the motion to it, though. Yeah, you, you It's like it, it's wrong, bro. If you want to run, you actually have to How does it test my accuracy on the throw, though? It's where your eyes are looking and where you throw your hand. Huh. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, yeah. but it's, it's good enough. I would love to do that type of one. stuff. <laughs> he said, do I have to throw it at this degree to get the... <laughs> Just remind me on Tuesday. He's gonna be overthrowing his receivers. I'll bring both on Tuesday so <laughs> you can play Madden and then you can see the immersion of, like, the Apple Vision Pro. But. Because I have to do an ad for the for the Meadow Quest. They want is a basketball game they want me to play. Um, and so when we go to All Star Weekend, you gonna you gonna use your thing? Yeah, yeah. That that car the ride. Car ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, it's just you crazy. You remember how they had that thing where like you could have your phone at the game, and it'll have like the player that's on the court. Like you could be watching the game on your phone, or like you point your camera towards the court. And it'll have like everybody the stats on the court. And everything. It'll have their names, their stats, and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. like. It's just crazy how technology is going to get. At this All Star game, how we're going to use it? Like things are going to be life. crazy, bro. I don't know if y'all saw those articles about like, like I'm actually going to watch the celebrity game because the floor is not made out of wood. It's made out of like some technology stuff, and it's going to be evolving around the game. Mm. You're going to really? be able to see everything on the floor. So oh, I'm wow. actually going to watch the the celebrity game. That is the appeal to me. I don't care about who's in it. I want to see how this technology. Yeah, we goes. might as well go. Yeah. yeah oh, it's going to be in person. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be crazy. Yeah, so it's, it should be fun. I think they're doing it too for the three point shootout too. I was excited for all stuff. I'm not excited no oh, more. Oh man, you done lost it. I text the group chat also and I say, "Hey, we better turn up. I don't want no trash <laughs> shit." <laughs> nobody wanna, replied. Nobody <laughs> acknowledged. <laughs> oh, well, I told y'all last time we was there. here that I'm on that this time around. I know, and I know how you coming. 
I mean, I've been ready to go out. I've, I'm always ready to go out. I just don't know I've how many been, opportunities. I've only turned do. it down once, and that was for that steak. Yeah, that bothers me. <laughs> My girl gave me all the spots for the for Indianapolis. Why does she? She know went it? to school there. Oh, I didn't nah, know that. she she said it's weak as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but we gonna, crack, a, we gonna make a crack though. We gonna make a crack. You can't compare your city. Yeah. To regular versus all star. Mm-hmm. All star get turned up there. We yeah. got to find somewhere to shop though. Bro, yeah. Utah, True. they was like, man, when we when our all star came through, they was like, we ain't had nothing this big in a long yeah. time. So yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, because I know if we go to All Star, if we go to if we go to Denver or we go to Utah right now in the same place we was at, mm-hmm. that shit gonna be dry, dry as hell. <laughs> but it was live for that three day stretch. It, it was. was. They had police everywhere. Yeah, we, we had might to tell the police this is my hotel. We, we gotta, we gotta find the Palominos. That's when we had pulled. We was trying to get to our hotel. The police walked up. D. Mill said. <laughs> KB talked. To, KB mentioned Palominos when we was in, when we was in Gotta go uh, to Milwaukee. Find, find. Yeah. I was telling somebody about you. I was saying like, man, we have we have a lot more fun and could do a lot more if this dude would just buy into the security. All you have to say is, "Hey, let us get through right here, uh, big fella." Just right, make sure you got an all black. Yeah, I'll, I'll get even you a security shirt. Got, even if he I'll don't get you got one all, of them shirts even, that say security on the back. Even if he don't got all black, if <laughs> yeah. he had that on, he's like, let me let me let these guys get through real quick. Hey, pardon me. Let me get that. Oh, you got to say something nice. Nice. Say something nice real quick. <laughs> Dude, that's all. Hey, excuse me. I'm sorry, man. Let these guys get through real quick. We be, we have wait no line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the Palomino things was funny though, because we it were was. talking about all, um. We were talking about going to Vegas, summer league, summer league. and yeah, he his girlfriend said that she wants to come to summer league. Who girlfriend? Uh, D, D- <laughs> Mills. And I was like, oh, they were talking boy. about stuff to do or whatever, whatever. I was like, you got to hit up Palominos. And D Mills looked at me like. <laughs> but that's like that i feel like people can enjoy that though you know what I'm saying? it's laid back it's laid back it could yeah. be like a like it is you know what i'm saying <laughs> it is very laid back they the, said they would go right didn't they yeah. say that they said they would want to go y'all that's some hilarious guys man. we'll see more power to y'all <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it just feels like that's just not a couple thing that's you, what you don't bring beach to a sand we no, oh, I'm you just, don't bring sand to a beach. No, it's not even that. It's, <laughs> I don't think people realize how much basketball we watch when we go to like. Oh no, for sure, yeah. we're there. It all is day. exhausting. Yeah, you know, my girl wouldn't come the first few days. She's not gonna be there. We watch basketball from eleven to eight, yes. and we hope that we. Thank God, Palominos was the way it was because if it was like Tootsie's, we'd have probably been in there dozing off. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Don't be, <laughs> you are, you are drained. You yeah. are tired. Tootsies, we ain't have nothing to do yeah. with that for a live show, chilling, whatever. But when you're watching basketball from 11 to 8, you're Your eating feet that. be hurting. Because yes. you're standing most yes. of it. Eating that bullshit uh, arena food. Oh I don't know why they don't so improve. Bad, why don't bro? you improve the food when you know year, we're coming? I don't think I hit the concession stand one time. Yeah, you didn't make a mistake. I was only eating because like, you have to. You're just yeah. hungry. You have to. So I'm it's gonna, like I might have to get some New Balance just for that standing. It get uh, Just to wear <laughs> just strictly, some, some, just re- okay. strictly wear Summer League. Those so are his people, standing shoes. When people <laughs> hear Summer League and hear that we going, and they get excited. He's going to put some hokas on. Right. That's That's the shoe. <laughs> Obviously, it's exciting to go, but I just don't think people realize what come with it. You know what yeah, I mean? It we just, literally get up, especially on the days where like the top picks are playing. We're yeah. there. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. We only take like one couple, a couple hours to maybe do a little bit of shopping. Yeah, shop that, when working. you can. You yeah. gotta pray that somebody getting shut down. If it's ever a year where it's like, man, we just gonna let the rookies loose, we gonna be messed up because we usually have. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, they shut Brandon Miller down. I ain't watching the Hornets versus yeah. This team that ain't even yeah. make a pick this year. Let's go. Let's go to good. Uh, yeah, we could, we could dip now. Yeah, but if they have a year where these guys is rocking, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. There's a lot of stuff that month um, that I need to tell y'all about when we don't the show. Well, maybe not a lot, but one extra event that we're gonna go to. From what I understand, that I can't talk about just yet during that month. Oh, when we go to Michael Jordan house. Yeah, we're gonna okay. go to. Well, I remember when we, was, when we were supposed to get. We were trying to rent out Scotty Pimpin's house here in Chicago. Who? Scotty Pimpin. Yeah, you say pimping. You, you say I do pimping, be saying pimping, bro. I do be saying pimping. Say it, say it. <laughs> it's pimping. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but it yeah, was like one dollar to rent out Scotty Pippen's house for the was it um, March Madness or something? That would have been yeah. a good video. And we were it like, was, can we get that? We were talking to H O H or whatever. <sighs> that would have been a of very course good nothing video. Drop the ball. That would have been a very good one. I want to do that with Michael Jordan's house because it's still in the market. It's been on the market for fifteen years. Is it on Airbnb though? Like, can you? Oh no, oh. it's just on Zillow. Okay. But we can fake like we want to buy You know it. what we should we do? Could. If you talk about meeting us somewhere, we should go Summer League and then from Summer League go to Miami. 
That's such a long flight, too. I hate that idea. I cannot be on a plane for more than four hours at a time. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> well, when you go overseas. That's why I lo- Who? Some point. Some, I, I'm with you. I what don't you like mean? long they flights. They're saying they, they want to see us in Australia. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, listen. I'll be in there with the, my, my Vision Pro. I'll be there virtually. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I feel you. I'm not, but, you know. I mean. I, 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 think, I thought, no, I thought, sure thought I the same thing. I'm, I'm just, I'm I just thought the same thing, man. I'm. From my like point of view, like I'm not gonna let a flight stop me from getting to where I want to go. Because you, know you do saying? all that, and then you get on the flight, and you get yeah. to where you need to get to, and then you feel fine. Yeah, I mean, you might need to rest a little bit. You might be a little jet lag, but now, but I, I feel am like, I gonna complain to me, about it? And is it gonna suck? Hell yeah. Hell to yeah. me, it ain't but, not so much of the flight. It be the process. Yeah, it be, that's why I'm glad the we driving. The worst thing is when you land long flight. We got to find that gate, y'all. Man. Make sure y'all buckle really up. Taxing Taxing for 35 minutes. Minutes. Like, just let me out. I'll walk from right here. And then here. you got D Mills. <laughs> I've walked from right here. D so. Mills in row 28D. I'm in 11C. He trying to run all the way up, dog. <laughs> 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 if you don't get your, hey, man, if you don't go get back there and sit, I hate sit people that. like that, man, bro. I bro. hate people like that so yeah. much. Cause, cause like we all don't have somewhere to be. Flight, there's no excuse. There's and guess no what? Newsflash, buddy. If you do have a collective flight, it's the, we still have to wait for the gate. Yeah. Running up here don't don't help him yeah. find a gate and get off the plane no easier, man. Um, hey, we will be back again in a couple of days to talk more about All Star. That'll be fate, our last old episode. Faces, new places is what we always title that next trade. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then um, we will not have an episode over All Star break, as you can understand. We'll be there working, but we will be working. You know, so uh, we don't have stories and stuff when we come back. And Working maybe, and networking. We should do a vlog. Uh, we, got, day we, we got the guys. Yeah, we got gonna, all the equipment now. We're going to do a little. vlog. Austin Austin is a lot more reliable than our last <laughs> vlog guy. <laughs> That's we'll, great. we'll get that happen. <laughs> yeah, we, shots fired. Ain't it no shots fired. No. Shots fired is only when you don't say it to the person's face. Don't do That's that. That's true. That is. <laughs> 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 hey, we'll see y'all Tuesday, man. Oh, man.